Welcome to the From the 108 Podcast, starring the drunk uncles of White Sox Twitter. He's a Twitter-like whore, an Instagram thirst trap, and your grandma's guilty pleasure. Be flow. A West Coast attitude in a decidedly Midwest body, My Sox Summer. And your host, he's sharing obscure music thoughts to give you time to hit the bathroom, Teresa E. Thank you, Cornsy. Welcome to the From the 108 podcast. Get ready for some baseball, beer, and bullshit. And remember the drinking rules. If Beeflo says allegedly, or that he made a video about that, you drink. If My Sock Summer mentions his time on the West Coast or blames his kids for something or eats their cake, you drink. And if I fuck up the intro or make MS appear to be dumb, you drink. And of course, you can make all of us drink. bullshit. For a dollar oh eight or more. And speaking of drinking, I'm not even putting up the graphic. Beef Loaf, what are you, you drinking? <laughs> You're starting off hot, motherfucker. I'm so happy you, you remember. I forgot about that. What a great you story. You better be I'm ready. Th- <laughs> it definitely won't come up during this. Uh, I'm drinking some Añejo, uh, my friends. I went and stocked up on tequila. So I have tequila for every one of these shows if I need it. So, uh, man, and it, it, it tastes great. Go down easy. It's fuel for a Beef Loaf. A young, uh, thriving Beef Loaf, if you will. Well, now I feel bad that I brought you a bottle of tequila. I should have brought you a bottle of something else. Baby, no, it's right there with the others. It's, it's hanging out with the rest. Is it any good? I, I haven't know. had it yet. I haven't had it. All right. You should fucking try it, you know? MSS, it's, what are you drinking, baby? I am drinking Old Fashions. I have the... Uh, oh, yeah. This, oh, this oh, first, oh. first one here... We're going to have a good a, My Sock Summer Night. Is, uh, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's 103. I think it's 103 proof. Uh, and it's... I th- I think it is three. It's I think it's four. No, no. I think it's three and a half uh, uh, shots, um, or three and a half ounces. And then the other ones are just two and a half ounces each, or four and a half ounces for two uh, of a hundred proof. So we're gonna have about three old fashions tonight using all Kirkland fine bourbons <laughs> that they sell. Because as I HBIC has told me, if as long as it's over about a hundred proof, it's usually good. And he has not steered me wrong yet. And my guy, buddy. When you got a twenty dollar bottle of bourbon like that, and you can mix it, and it is that good, I mean, shit. I mean, we're in the well, money here. So, and MSS, remember that night me and Beef were over, and yeah. you were making us old fashions, and like, <laughs> that's funny. There was, there was just like, what, like five or six different bourbons in a row that like just didn't taste right. With, yeah, they were horrible. The Which is like, it's weird to not be able to mix a bourbon in an old fashioned. It's like, true. It just like, like it didn't work right. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to mention understand. the names. The, the one was, but the, the Kirkland was River, the uh, something from Trader Joe's. It was shit, a uh, shit bourbon. Okay, no big deal. The other one though is from like a good beer brewer, and it was like, we, and we mentioned the name. You know, to, to I pinched it to Baloney, and Baloney's like, that's the only bottle of bourbon I've ever had to dump down to drink. It was that fucking awful. Oh. I couldn't even drink it. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> Speaking of drinking, we got a drink here from our guy, Taco Gladiator. He says, let's go, you slugs. Have a show. Appreciate you, my friend. Oh, fuck. I'm making the He's all showered up, ready to go for the comments. I love it. It's awesome. I like Spock DJing. That's awesome. What are you drinking, Cherezy? So I got one. I got a... It's from Funky Town. It's the Hip Hop's R and R and Brew. I totally bought this just because of the the can. Uh, So it's it's basically like the the Fuji's... Fuji's, uh, cover ah. it's awesome i i like really like the can and the beer is really good so it's oh. it's it all worked out Ooh. it all worked out in the end <laughs> that's good Lord. It's, always a, it's always a plus when that happens mss how you doing tonight buddy you know i'm doing good i was doing better before you mentioned the fact that i ate cake that was my daughter's cake but uh <laughs> yes. no big deal I'm fucking prick. oh no big deal now too late now listen <laughs> I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put this out there, and, and this is this is just how things work in our house. Okay, if something sits in the fridge for too long, I'm gonna either eat it or it's gonna get thrown away. There was a piece of fucking goddamn cheesecake from spring break that was still in there that my daughter had brought home from Cheesecake Factory that still had not touched it, had not eaten it. I had to throw it away because it had been sitting there for three fucking weeks. Okay, the wife goes to Weber's Bakery like yeah. early last week, yeah. brings home. Like five pieces of cake that are individually wrapped in plastic and all that shit. It's fucking Friday night or whatever. Saturday, or Friday, Saturday night. Saturday it might have been Saturday night. 
it's still in the goddamn Drunk fridge. Flood, can't remember. I'm like, I'm gonna eat this shit. So I fucking ate. I made myself an omelet and ate some fucking cake. And that was just what I Oh, did. I didn't know about this omelet. Yeah. I didn't know about this omelet. <laughs> omelet I didn't know that. Yeah. But a side of cake? A side of <laughs> someone else's cake. cake was Give me an omelet. I'm going to make this omelet and have a side of someone else's cake. I, this is, listen. It's <laughs> a winning Your meal. Your boy, I, I had I had an omelet today, too. I had zucchini today. I had a zucchini, an onion with some pepperoni and some cheese. Three egg, three egg omelet. Two pieces of toast. It's fucking great. I just, I, I really like eating that. It's it good. It keeps you regular. It's good stuff. It's fresh. But uh, yeah, no. So I, I ate the omelet and then I ate that. And I was like, it was a great fucking evening. And I fell right the fuck to sleep in the chair. Uh, it was good. <laughs> um, but the girls' cake that I ate, we started T ball this week and we opened it up at UIC uh, at the indoor practice facility, which was fun. Um, and the girls were just like in the boys because it's, it's co ed T ball. We're just smacking the ball around. And my older one, Little Miss Shortstop, is fucking smashing the ball like is helping like the kids throw the ball teaching them how to throw like how she throws which is it's kind of mid but that's okay uh and then so she's like doing her little thing daughter is uh, my my youngest daughter i'm throwing the ball to her she goes to catch the ball bounces off her glove smacks her right in the cheek oh she just breaks into tears and is unconsolable oh Later in the evening, something else happens. I don't, not sure exactly what. I think um, my older daughter might have said something to let her get her upset. So she started crying again. So when she comes home, she goes, "Dad, I feel really bad. Why do you feel really bad? Because I cried in front of my teammates twice." And I go, "Listen, don't take things personally and just go with it." I go, "Did it hurt when it hit you in the jaw?" She goes, "Kind of." And I was like, "Okay, well, if it hurt, then you, you know, it's okay. Don't worry about it." So, go, cut fast forward. Wednesday, we have a fucking practice. We're out there. Little kids, they're hitting off the tee. I got five kids there, six kids there, and they're just smoking the ball. And none of these kids realize that you got to get back, right? And we're not on a real field. And I'm like, you got to move back. You got to move back. And they keep going, oh, let's get closer. And I'm like, someone's going to get hit. Who gets hit? My youngest. Right in the fucking chest with a fucking this guy smoked the ball. One hopper. Boom. Right in the chest. Bounces right off her. She goes, runs up, grabs it, takes it, throws it to first. And I was like, yeah. Like Happy Gilmore. No fucking tears. And she looked at me. <laughs> right. She looks at me and goes, Dad, I didn't cry. And I was like, hell yeah. I go, did it hurt? And she's like, not really. It was a softball. I go, yeah. It was the same ball that hit you in your face the other night. And she goes, really? And I was like, yeah. So I go, it's, it, this, don't be so sensitive. And she's like, I'm not going to be sensitive anymore. And I was like, Dad, when? Good job. So oh, shit. Only hopefully 300 more days till hockey trials. <laughs> we don't have we don't have we don't keep score. No, do we know who wins the um games in T-ball, but I am coaching the White Sox. I have a feeling we will have more wins this season than Pedro has had so far in the first half of the season. We don't play 162 games. So uh yeah, I, I'm gonna be the, the best White Sox uh manager in the Bridgetown, Bridgeport area. So how are you guys doing? Bridgetown. Tonight? Bridgeport Town. <laughs> Bridgetown. You Bridgeport know. Town, USA. I, you know what, you know what Tracy? I can't, I can't believe MSS smoked his daughter in the face with the ball so she'd forget about this cake thing. But see, it's, you know what? Wild. You get her mind yeah. off the cake. It's like, yeah. oh, my God. You know, my, my eye my yeah. eye hurts. I, I forgot to drink my cake, you fat ass fuck. We, we, <laughs> I, I'm not going to rail on MSS no, anymore because I, I railed never. on him all day Sunday. And I woke up on Monday. <laughs> it's, and I thought to myself, wait a second. There's a piece of this that I wasn't really uh, properly getting through my my mind, which was your wife bought this cake, right? And yeah. the cake that she bought for the kids was the Funfetti cake, and you got a different cake. Yes. Now, Beef, <laughs> it's no mistake I, don't identity. Know, I don't know if you remember. I don't know if no. you remember. We had a question in the Sunday Soak that was – uh, only about is something cake or not, right? Like, you know, the thing where like <laughs> yes, you, you yes. cut into the thing and is it, is it cake? Yeah. Or not? yeah, I remember this. <clears throat> and MSS did not even answer the question, but he went on like five minute rant about how much he likes Funfetti cake. So <laughs> knowing <laughs> his just absolute yeah. desire for this type of cake, how could you bring it into a home and leave it sit that, for more than twelve minutes, yeah, that like is, you got you got to devour it that right is away. Just dumb and you got to be right there. Yeah. you can't even look at it. You got to be staring no. at him, making sure he's not gonna get in. Not, so, he needs to be chained up or chained out of the area that has it. I, yeah, I agree with you. Here. So I, I'm still not on your side, MSS, but I I am suspect of what was going <laughs> on in the first place. Be. 
You suck. <laughs> wait, Appreciate wait, that. he's expecting sympathy for eating other. No, I don't need. I don't need any. Oh, just check. I was just checking there. I don't need any sympathy. God beef, I, beef. I eat it tonight. I'm good. I gotta, I gotta get something out there first before I get to my regular banter. And uh, it's my, it's my guy socks. Double he, banter uh, night again, Cherie. You know, I was, I was, I was talking to him in a in a DM uh, chat group that we're in, and I was breaking his balls a little bit that he he don't listen to the show anymore. He used to always listen. He's like, all right, I'm gonna come out one time. But uh, there's another guy in this DM. I don't want to name who. I don't want to name names. Let's just pretend that this person's name is James uh, Tag Vomit. And uh, you know what? He's a young man, and he has not um, busted a nut in over a week. And we were having a little discussion about the length of time one goes without relieving them. So, I mean, a man our age, like maybe it's a little bit longer because we're busy. We don't have the same sex drive, but it's also good for the prostate. So I want to ask you guys. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, let's go around the room and just say, what's what's like a, a an average amount of time? Could be in minutes or days, whatever, however you want to measure it, Treasy. I, I know you. I know, how you. I know your habits. You know, that you do. Because I want, I want to get a feel for this because I it just felt like yeah. an, an enormous amount of time for being like early twenties. I'll well, I'll, I'll relate to the early twenties, and I'll tell yeah. you, like, I, I don't know how this guy's doing it because there was back then, you know, I I would work uh, road crew, and like you're you're in a bus with guys for like that's pretty you know, horny. For you like, gotta you gotta be jerking off like, all the time. <laughs> I was just saying, can't stop coming. That's what I mean. Well, <laughs> well it's like when, this is how it when, is. When can you? Right. When, when, can, when can you? you? Like, like there's oh, only when can like, you? When, like <laughs> your door, your door to your sleeping quarters is basically like just like uh, like a thin curtain. Yeah. Like you can't be in there just like you know working <laughs> working your magic in there. I, like and, no one's ever busted one in a public restroom. Come on now. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, We're that's the thing. A lot about your that's the thing. Today. Like your your options are so limited. And like uh. the first tour I was ever on, I was like, all of these are terrible options. I'm not going to do it. And like midway through the tour, I wanted to just kill everybody. <laughs> like I just wanted to just like like someone would like move a, you know piece of gear like in, in my general vicinity. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, what what is happening? What is happening? And it's just like it's like that Seinfeld episode when they did the contest. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah like it, it's like there's just too much testosterone loaded up in you. <laughs> you're, you're like you're like write yeah. it out Ben Affleck in that Friday after after school special where he's like he, he starts doing roids and he starts beating the shit out of everybody. Like that's that's who you become. Yeah, that's not good. Like you see a picture like this and you're just like, I got to bust the boat nut or something. Oh, or you're done. Oh. You're done. <laughs> Look at that dump truck. Cool. <laughs> it's pretty dump truck. Flowing out of there. How about you, MSS? Come on, what, you know. I'd say like five. Teresa avoided. Teresa avoided the the, the question. You know, oh, four, oh, two, 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 three hours. Two, three hours. <laughs> I got it. Five days. Drink. That's that's for five days now. Back then, though. No. I mean, oh, thank you, Soxwood. He, he says, says thank, thank you for spreading awareness, beef. <laughs> I'm trying. Go. I'm trying to help. Public service, my friend. Double G too. Um, yeah, I I mean, back in the in the twenties, though. I mean, that was probably like every other day. Like just, every other day. God, I mean, man, I, I I didn't realize I have a, a good sex trap. Fuck, I can I will never go three days. Never, ever, ever go what? three days. I'll That's find a way to day. bust it like not. Two days. Like and when I was younger, now? when I was younger, at least once a day. Come on, you're not even going 24 hours. <laughs> at least I'm once not a going day. 24 hours with that. Dude. Now we know why you well, unless I was in a seminary point. or something, or my, unless I had my cock locked up and I couldn't touch it or something. Man, I don't know. Like five once, days. Give me a fucking break. A day, <laughs> once a day in your early twenties, all the time. I get it. Okay. Yeah. I mean yeah, at least but, once man, a day. What your did you do arms. before there was like free uh, like available porn like on the bro, internet? This, like Bro, the spank bank is strong, son. <laughs> that's what, it was. what do you mean? I, I, I don't know I don't, why you got married. What the hell? I, I, married I don't know what I ran young. into here, man. You we needed... shared a room, man. What <laughs> the need... fuck? Oh no, I didn't I didn't I wasn't <laughs> shooting on you or nothing. I went to other places. Don't worry, Treasy. We, we kept the line there, baby. We got we're strong. We're strong. We, you know. Yeah, you guys have you guys claim to have never seen each other's genitals. So I uh, that's and that doesn't I don't know how yes, that is. Yes, Missy is is how am I the horniest? I, I'm not. He's I can't ugly. be. I can't be. <laughs> he is. No, he is. I'm ugly. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, he looks pretty ugly. So that's why he's so horny. <laughs> got a drink from but Gordo. He says, he, he, Gordo says he yeah, loves cheers. the jersey beef. Cheers, Thank you, Thank you Gordo. Oh, bless I'm, in, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, but I also now understand why you had to get married so young. Because you're like, I need in-house. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be jerking off once a day. I need to like bust a nut somewhere that's a different sport time. though let's if we're being honest with ourselves you know those are two different sports i Isn't enjoy it? them 
I enjoy both of them very much, but you know, <laughs> different sports. But you want a partner, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've been married half my life, so yes, I would say. No, I, what um, I mean, that's a that's an American. But, but Teresa, so okay, so I, I, I on to my actual uh, banter. You know, the other night, Monday night, I I finish working, I come upstairs, and I tell Mister, we're gonna let's put the Sox game on. She goes, "What are you putting a fucking Sox game on?" WNBA draft is on, right? So I'm like, I, I don't like okay. where this is going. I'm like, okay, out of, the segue is weird. W- <laughs> That's not the same thing. Is WNBA draft. Pre- I'm, like, oh, I'm like, I didn't know WNBA draft was on uh, tonight. So yeah. obviously, Caitlin Clark's the first pick, whatever. So, uh, you know, I, as someone who's been a basketball guy for a long time, you were too treasy. Like, when the WNBA was first coming on, and this is like mid 90s, I'm like uh, high school, college, whatever. Let's just be honest with ourselves. I coached girls basketball for a long time too. The WNBA fucking sucked. It was terrible yeah. the, for the, the beginning of it. It just wasn't a good league back then. Fast forward to now, when the women's yeah. college basketball tournament kicked the ass of the men's college basketball tournament, it has a star power and everything. Easy. I'm watching uh, for the ratings. MSS yeah, killed it. It's like two million. <laughs> it's like two million. Oh, 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 no big deal. <laughs> I, no, no. I mean, it, it, right? it is a big deal, but I mean, it's also there was a lot of hype. I don't want to fucking derail you, so keep going, and then we can just talk about this. So, so I'm watching this, or whatever, and I'm seeing all these high picks, or whatever. These women, super talented, they're bad as hell too, man. Dressed to the fucking nines, they're ready to talk to Holly Rowe. Holly Rowe has been in this in the spot forever, man. She she needs her She's roses. Awesome. But anyway, and I, all I kept thinking was, man, the WNBA mafia. They're getting ready to fucking take off, aren't they? This league is about to like flip the shit over and just become a total menace out there. And the draft, like, it, this is like, uh, the draft was so star studded. Uh, you know, the, the the sky got two two of the top seven picks. They got uh, Camila Cardosa and then they got uh, Angel Reese. And then, you know, so the last two national champion, you know, the best players on those teams. I'm looking at this draft tree. He's like, this is the 83 NFL uh, draft for all the oh. quarterbacks. This is the 2003 NBA draft. Like, Fuck, are they about to do some big shit here? Well, here's here's the crazy thing that that coincides with with, with what you're talking about too, is like this is the, the most perfect timing for the league yeah. too because the players association can opt out of their CBA after this season, and like that money, baby. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's just a like a perfect like that them like the 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 college basketball uh, championship getting better ratings than the men's. Yeah, that is perfect timing. This draft no is perfect timing. Like that, that they gotta have like a really great season, and like it can kind of kind of change the game on on uh, you know what they're paid and and how they're uh, you know like what kind of what kind of profit sharing they get and shit. So it's pretty it's pretty good timing. It's pretty if, good. Yeah, timing. It, it, it feels it is. like it's ready. The thing's ready to take off. And what do you guys think? You think it's gonna like? You think that college popularity is going to swing and then it's going to be an M- WNBA? Or you think it's one of these things where sometimes certain college sports pump up and then you don't, the popularity doesn't really transfer? People got to show the, the people that are putting the money into the league need to show up with checks and put the money into the league. If there's no money there, it's not, I don't think it'll go anywhere. Like you, you got a lot of free publicity right now with the draft. People are hyped. So if it doesn't match up to what people are expecting, like that national championship game, hundred percent. That four, four, uh, final four, hundred yep. percent matched the hype. It was, it was good. Yeah, and it was see. good basketball. But if you start getting some fucking lame duck fucking games in the NBA, and there's no like shoving or you know any of these fights or any of the shit talking, I don't think it needs no any one's fights. gonna be fucking watching like, that see, shit. <laughs> see, here's, here's here's the way I see and it. They need, no, here's the way I see that it. Fight with LSU Steve in like, South Carolina. When they shoved each other and they were like, "Sure, yeah, like for you, huge, man, like, you don't need fighting in the sport to make it need, like good. you need like you what, need some passion." But th- that was think passion. About, think about it this way. Think about it this way. the The draft is going to bring a lot of a lot of eyes, right? I think, especially in Chicago, people are excited about the people that were drafted. The sky is out there going, "Get get your tickets now!" Right? So people yeah. are going to buy tickets. People are going to go. Now, what the NBA does, probably better than any other sport, is like when your ass is in the seat, you're entertained. Yeah, you're entertained the whole way, the, the whole, whole game. Time, time you're there. You're in there. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's no sport that does it better. WNBA, as long as they're doing the same thing, I mean, we, especially for Chicago, the Wind Trust is great. Like, it's a great stadium. 
And like, so I think that like, yeah, I, th- I think if they could actually, if they can get the asses in the seats, that's the, that's the key. <laughs> that's the key thing. And it looks like at least in Chicago, they're like, working that I'm seeing ads all over the place. Like yeah. I'm sure people are buying them because they like what happened in the draft. I mean, Indiana is obviously going to be sold out. <laughs> right. And then everybody's yeah, going to buy tickets, tickets to go see Caitlin Clark when she comes through their town, right? It's going to be like like Messi rolling through the yeah. the MLS. So, like, you get the asses in the seat. Make the most of it. Make that, Give that entertaining uh, thing that you, you do for the NBA. Replicate it in the WNBA, which I haven't been to a WNBA game. So I what does that take? If it's, if it's great. But, like, Beef, you've been, right? Like, yeah, so, I've been. Yeah. Like, do they kind of replicate what's what's going on there where you're like entertained no. end to end? I'll be honest, I don't fully remember because it, I was chaperoning my uh, my daughter's uh, school when she was in like fourth grade or whatever, and I was walking her and her friends around the stadium, and then I ran into a guy that I played high school ball with. Uh, you he gave him a big hug. <laughs> he was actually played. had a group there too, but it's it's uh, so I, it was like a preseason game. So I, I, did you I go don't to know that they had or did you go there. to United Center? Wintrust. I was at Wintrust. Okay, yeah. you were at Wintrust. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because Wintrust is nice, and they do a good job with DePaul there, so I'm assuming they do a good job with the WNBA stuff. But there's so much more. They need that money, though, to, like, make it bigger, to throw more shit out, to give people stuff, you know, like that kind of stuff, you know, like to get that halftime entertainment or whatnot. Like, you need a little bit of that. No, you do. There's there's so many talented people in Chicago that will do that shit for free, man, for the exposure. (laughs) Like, like half of the people that that you see at the Bulls game performing anything, like, they're getting shit, man. They're not making, they're not like. Oh, Red red Pandas, Red Pandas getting paid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Red Pandas getting paid. paid. (laughs) They all get paid. There's some notoriety that goes around with it, too, but like. It, you know, you you need to. MSS says they need money, so they're going to sell think, some stuff on eBay. And then uh, Treasy said they're going to be fine. So, okay, I, 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 need, I got it. I, I, got, I got what I need out of this group. Uh, Baloney's out there in the, in the comments. He says they need the college coaches in WNBA too. They're all, they're all personalities as well. Makes them entertaining. Uh, yeah, I mean, the more entertainment, uh, the better. But I think what they have right here is a group uh, of players that already have a bunch of cachet. They're they terrific players, and then let's just see kind of where this can go from it's here. It's got to carry it, over. It needs a launching pad, you know? Beef, it's it's got to carry over. It, while you're talking about it, so Caitlin Clark yeah. got drafted. And, and I yep. think you probably all saw, like, lots of articles about the pay disparity between, like, the number one pick and the WNBA draft and the, and the NBA draft. And, like, everybody's got opinions on that and shit. But one thing that I kept seeing was this. And it was, it was, it was uh, Clark's annual salary is even far less than some NBA mascots. <laughs> Newsweek notes. And if you go to that Newsweek article, it says the same shit. The same shit's all over the place. Those yearly salaries are $625,000 in Denver, $600,000 in Atlanta, and $400,000 in Chicago. They're saying Benny the Bull makes $400,000 a year. Is anyone in this it, uh, listening to this who is well aware of who owns the Chicago Bulls, that any of you believe... <laughs> That Benny the Bull is raking in four hundred thousand dollars. MSS, I need like an investigation here. I need uh, this is MSS <laughs> investigates all over it. There's no fucking way Benny the Bull's making four hundred k. Even this if guy, there's eight different Benny the Bulls, they're not making fifty k each. It's not. It's not happening. There's no way he's making two hundred k. Okay, I mean, I just don't think that that's like that's not even where you're close to like what these guys actually get paid. And I don't know what that is. And when I asked the, you know, we know we know Southpaw, and he... <laughs> Timothy Maher says Benny, Benny the Bull once threw a thousand dollar bill in my face when I asked him about the smoke at my niece's birthday party. See, I'm telling you, I I believe it. I believe he makes four hundred k. I I mean we we know sort of like what the the practices uh for the mascots behind the scenes like what they get to, they get to go to do personal appearances they get booked to go do like school stuff and they they're in parades and they get paid to do all this a lot of stuff the team takes a cut of that so even if Benny the Bull is doing every fucking thing under the sun which I don't think he is is I don't see him everywhere. He's fucking losing half of it. <laughs> My sucks so, out there looking for Benny the Bull constantly. Saying, never sees him. <laughs> I'm just saying. I've shown up. I I've never shown up to the Southside Irish Parade and see Benny the Bull fucking Beef. whipping T-shirts at me. I have seen Southpaw okay. twice throw T-shirts at me. Okay. So I'm just Beef, saying. A question. A question for this. you here. Yeah. Will, will Lenin Sosa stay in the majors long enough this year to earn as much as Benny the Bull? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think. I don't think he's got the wherewithal to make it. No, I don't what, think that's happening. <laughs> 
What's his up? Uh, but what's a uh, what's minimum? Minimum is like what three million? And no, I minimum. No, 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 seven hundred thousand. Yeah, about seven hundred thousand. Little, a little less than seven hundred thousand. That would require oh. like you know a fifty three percent of the year or something. Fifty four percent of, of the year. Because of what he's what he's done. Like once you get to a certain level, like TJ. TJ is at a certain level, and he's had so many years of service. Like he gets. You know, whatever the league minimum. Yeah, there's is. a different league I, minimum. Yeah, as you, yeah, as yeah, older, yeah, yeah, uh, the, yeah. The more, the more service yes. time you have. Yeah, but uh, Lenin has like almost none. Yeah, that's um, true. No, I get it. I get it. I, I was. I mean, I was. He has. He has enough that we know he can't hit. But like, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> he doesn't have enough to make more than Benny the Bull. That's that's what I'm getting. <laughs> we'll, <basically. laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe he'll have a year. Maybe he'll have a year. Maybe he'll run his own 16 in softball tournament and get a bunch of teams in. Well, who knows? Well, I'll see. tell you what, though, Treasy. If if my sex owner finds out that Benny the Bull does make 400k, this motherfucker is gonna have trampoline dunking in his backyard. He's <laughs> oh my god! Working out, baby. He's gonna, gonna start training. Kid. Let's go. <laughs> hey, listen. Fuck this school shit. You're you're gonna start learning how to make a half court shot behind your back. Okay. That's right. You know you get. Throw this popcorn like up in that. the air. This is the skill. <laughs> Who is that motherfucker? Is it Todd Redovich? The, 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 his dad built him to be a quarterback? I'm going to build yeah. my daughter to be a goddamn uh, fucking mascot. mascot. I mean, she's going to be the best goddamn work, mascot baby. out there. She's only going to eat orange juice, and, and I'm going to eat all her cake. That's all you You have oranges and fucking eggs. That's, That's all you get. Cake and omelets. <laughs> Fun fatty omelet. We got a couple drinks before we no get to uh, sugar. Oh, before we get to paying some bills, we here, but we got uh, Chicago's finest says sperm is not like wine. You do not let it age. <laughs> That's well said. I want that on my tombstone. Thank you. Your tombstone is gonna be littered with shit. I saw, you saw a tweet about that. John, and everything. Holy Christ. John Nava says, and this is why I'm here on Thursdays. Thanks for the laughter. <laughs> Cheers. I don't know if oh, he's talking about a Benny the Bull or, or shooting on Benny the Bull. I mean, who knows? And why shooting does it ropes, matter? baby. I'm sorry. Thank you. Either or. My Sox Summer, man. Yeah. Want to help me out? Let's do it. Hey, White Sox fans. Welcome back to the Shrimp Side. We know you've been waiting for the season to start, and we're excited to have you back. Whether you're coming to a game or just passing by, make sure to stop at Lawrence's Fish and Shrimp on Canal Street. We're open 24 hours a day, ready to serve you delicious seafood that will satisfy your hunger. Whether you're craving mouthwatering shrimp, flanky fish, or even crispy frog legs, we've got you covered. So before the game, during the game, or after the game, come to Lawrence's for a meal that will hit the spot. Stop by one of our four locations today or visit our website at chicagoshrimp.com to place an order for pickup or delivery. Come see why Lawrence's Fish and Shrimp has been serving up the seafood you crave since 1950. Yeah. Oh, I was jamming. It's a, Groovy. it's a great tune. It's a great tune. I love it, yep. MSS. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good th- thank you Soxwood. I, I appreciate that i mean we all regular just not every day just not as regularly not as regularly oh my lord you know i i should Probably. i should reveal this too before white Sox talk you know everyone people say that they they take a take a crap every day right yeah i'm not an everyday crapper i'm not either five or six times a week not not a, not a full seven days <laughs> Seven days. I almost deleted that image, by the way. <laughs> you hadn't used it in so long. I'm so sorry. many times I could use it. So many times I could use it. All right. It's time for some White Sox talk. No, not more. <laughs> I got the wrong one. <laughs> Why do they look so similar? <laughs> Jesus. So, I like this one. Oh, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. <laughs> I don't almost like hit the Young. fucking cycle. Fuck you, Teresa. He almost hit the cycle. I'm excited. Yeah. Hey, before like we talk about it, I'm excited about how well Paul Young's doing right now because when he's DFA in July, it'll be so much more hilarious for us to oh, dump man. on MSS. I mean, we, I, like, I don't, we, I don't need to give MSS any credit for that, but we do need to give MSS credit for something else. So MSS, we, we did last week, who won't be with the team on May 1st? Yeah. Nailed it. Brian Shaw. <laughs> not even, not nailed it. Right. I mean, like, they did like. I feel like they like Chris Getz heard the segment and was like, "Yeah, fuck that guy," and and got rid of him. <laughs> Meanwhile, mine was like, "Oh, Max Stassi's going to be back any day." They're like seven hundred day IL. Like you're never going to see this guy again. And beef, your you, your guy actually uh, he's just hanging on by a thread. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and it's it's a it's an iffy outing every time, but he's 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 hanging in there. So yes, sir. who'd you pick? You had Davey, right? Yeah, he had a two out. He had a two inning save the other day. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he pitched good. He pitched good the other day. 
He's been he's been. I all think right. I turned him around. It's, it's, maybe I turned him the fuck around. Maybe I feel like it's going to be a very uh, bumpy ride. The whole I might get orange season. hair just like him. Let's go, baby. <laughs> oh, that's that we need. <laughs> oh <we> man. <laughs> all right. So we did have, we did have a Mexican we did have carrot top. We did have a signing, which is a, an interesting uh, signing. Someone that I wrote about, uh, I think, multiple times in the off season. Yeah. Which is Tommy Pham. So Tommy Pham comes to to the Sox minor league deal, but like mm-hmm. from what it seems, it's a minor league deal because he just needs to get up to speed before he, he starts playing. Yeah. So like I would expect him with the team uh, pretty soon. Quickly, he's got to yeah. opt out April twenty fifth, Treasy. So it's yeah, it's so they, they got to they got to bring him up. So beef your initial thoughts on the signing. You know, it's interesting. I, I just had Ken W on uh, you like almost two weeks ago now. And one of, the, one of the topics we were discussing was, like, turning over the roster. And we were both like, well, what could they do next? And he brought up Tommy Pham. And he's like, well, I wouldn't mind if they brought in Tommy Pham. And I agree with him because why not? You can use just another guy who is a reasonable major league bat who can handle an outfield position. I know you're like, oh, well, he doesn't really play center that much anymore. And, then, you know, last year he, in his age 35 season, Pham is 36 now. He, he slashed 256, 328, 446. That's a 111 OPS plus. That's 11% above average. He'd be like the third or fourth best Sox hitter with that, with that line right there. Totally reasonable in the outfield. Um, he's the type of guy, Treasy, like I, you don't realize how old he is. Like he, he was good yeah. when he was on his career. He's still pretty good. He, to me, he's like, he, I think he's in the, the Vinny Testaverde portion of his career where it's like, that, that old guy still can do some stuff. And it's like, ah, he's pretty decent. And last year, 1.9 F4. And he killed it actually in the World Series, eleven hundred OPS, uh, you know, with the Diamondbacks. So I think there's yeah. still something there. And the White Sox are just so lacking in bats that I I, I like the especially, signs from that perspective, especially in the outfield beef, especially in the yeah. outfield. So like he's still a mediocre hitter. He's a at this point a mediocre fielder. Like he's like you look at his his, his stats, like his, uh, his fielding statistics, and it's all like zero everything. Like it's, it's, it's uh, like solidly average, <laughs> <laughs> not falling behind, not showing off, but, but he, he's, he's going to be like somewhere between, I would guess like a 90 and 105 OPS plus kind of guy uh, at the, at bat. That'd be huge. And, <laughs> and yes, when you look at our team, let me give you a couple numbers here. Cause Kevin Pilar is, is by far our best uh, outfield hitter right now. 119 OPS plus behind him, Dominic Fletcher, 77, <laughs> Robbie Grossman, 58, <laughs> Hello. bringing up the rear, Andrew Benintendi, 22. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> really doing it. <laughs> but, fucking 22 OPS. If Martin Maldonado wasn't on the team with his negative 48 OPS plus, <laughs> that's the man. This would be some embarrassing shit. I mean, it's embarrassing already, but it's yeah. it, it's it's unbelievable that there's someone worse. But yeah, it's it's brutal. It's a the, it's absolutely brutal out there. Even guys <laughs> like Eloy, who's back now, he hasn't been hitting. Worth no, the not shit. yet. And uh. so, so you don't really have any like reliable bats, and you got guys going out, you know, giving up one, two, three runs. These are winnable games, and yep. you look at the lineup, and you're like. Ah fuck! Like I like it was it wasn't long ago. Like uh, Dominic Fletcher laid down a bunt against uh, Cleveland, and I was like, "Why the fuck did they bunt?" Because the next two guys up have no chance, no chance at the plate. Yeah, yeah. like it, like who who were you expecting to drive in the run? <laughs> so like adding him just makes a lot of sense because you you can find plenty of at bats for a guy who is a mediocre hitter in this fucking terrible lineup. Now, beef, I do want to like, just get to something else though, because I, you know, I, I'm very interested in, in Tommy fam in the other side of him, which is just, oh. he's kind of a character. He's kind of a lot of stuff <laughs> yes. seems to happen around Tommy. It's an interesting yeah. clubhouse fit. I think is what they generally call him. And like what I put out a tweet, I put out a tweet that was like, who should Tommy Pham slap? Because you know there's the the incident. We'll we'll get into it in a minute. But like, and people went crazy. Like, like a lot of people want him to go and slap like uh, a 90 year old man, which is interesting. 
Yeah. Um, a, I mean, I, no but, kink shaming, but can't you know, do that. That, is, that is interesting. He's the boss. But, he has a lot of power. You know, it's, it's, it's possible, you know, he just needs to release two and maybe that'll help. But the, the, <laughs> that's why I spent dead. So it was, it was a great, oh, it was a great exercise in who does everyone hate on this team? Like who's, who's your most hated person on the team, which I didn't even really intend to do, but, uh, way to go. It, it worked. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> nice job. <laughs> and I was glad to see it, but MSS, you know, oh, there you go. <laughs> I want to ask you a little bit about about a Tommy fam. I, I told you, you know, hey, don't worry about the baseball side of this. Right. I want you to do a little research for me because I haven't had time to dig into Tommy so, fam. I've only heard things, you know, in the a lot of allegedly, right? Yeah. In the ether. I'm just like, yeah, it just passes me by. So I want to get my investigator on this. MSS, what'd you find? So I too unfamiliar with Tommy Pham's game. I've heard his name a lot, and I was like, you know, he's mentioned the same sentence as Clevenger, and they're like, oh my god, another guy like this, and you're just like, okay, he's got must have done some bad shit. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna investigate. So first thing I do is go to Baseball Reference. He's got an 18 point 18 point one career WAR, which I was like, okay, that's decent. We'll take yeah. that. And I was like, oh, he was just in the World Series with the Diamondbacks. That's good, you know. Like he hit 16 home runs last year. Okay, so we're now we're getting in there. So I'm like, oh, let's go find the dirt. Why do people not like him? So Tommy Pham, I, I went down the rabbit hole and I, I got learned a lot about Tommy Pham today. So I was like, I'm not leaving any stone unturned as I go through and look in there. He has a twin sister. His mom was 17 years old when she had him. His dad was 19. His dad was also incarcerated. Oh. When he was born, so his dad was not around for his, his uh, like when he was born, and he was gone most of the time. His life has been incarcerated. I think he just got released uh, in 2018, so he's been out for six years. Oh, wow. Um, now, Tommy doesn't have a dad at home. He mentions this many times in interviews, and he's he used to play catch with a baseball by himself against a wall, would just throw a ball and learn how to field, and he would throw um, wiffle balls in the air to catch and how to field. So now he gets into travel ball. A lot of the coaches, they always say, it takes a village to raise everybody, right? Coaches would come pick him up because he showed talent. He was playing really good. They were driving him to games. He's on a travel ball team. And one of the stories that they popped out in this SI article was that when their team, the travel ball team, won the league, they went and celebrated at, like, you know, one of those, like, fun, like, go-kart places that has, like, all the shit, you know, like the arcade games and everything. They had batting golf. cages. All the other kids are out playing, right? And they're just they're fucking around. They're just enjoying the, the success. Not Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham is in the batting cages taking fucking cuts the entire party. He's like, Hell yeah. shit ain't over yet, man. It ain't <laughs> over. I'm going to fucking, he's like, I have access to a batting cage. Fuck them go-karts. I'm going to go and <laughs> hit balls. So that's what he did. Now, Tommy also did not look at the eclipse. Too busy. And, and no. <laughs> he had a lot of shit going on. Fits right in with Pedro. This is good. That's who I thought he should have. He should smack, though. He'd be like, shut oh. the fuck up, man. Hello. She just Hello. talked too much. Uh, so now. Also in the SI article, he had this quote, and he said he was talking about like him in the minor leagues. So like he does really good in high school. He was an A student. He does really well. He gets drafted by the Cardinals right out. You know he was committed to play for Arizona. Decides not to play for Arizona. Goes directly into the the Cardinal system is moving up. And while he's moving up and, and is going through, and he finally gets up there, he has this big long fucking quote that I think like just personifies like who Tommy Pham is. And he says, uh, the sting from his way lane has less to do with his finances than it did about getting disrespected. He said, we, they said, we believe in you. You could do it all along. And that's the thing that's so mind boggling. I said, if that's the fucking case, then I, why was I fucking demoted to triple a? And if that's the case, why the fuck was I battling in the eighth hole this year behind the guy who fucking got called up from high a that shit. And that's fake shit, man. I was from a background where my mom kept it so real. My mom would be like, man, look, I don't have no money to get you nothing for Christmas. I don't have no money to get you nothing for your birthday. I'm sorry. I got to pay the bills. I respected her because shit. She told us from the get go. All that is fake shit, man. I was not raised like that. So like Tommy fam. I love that. Is, is not a joke. Like the guy is just like he understands this shit, right? He is not dumb. And I think a lot of people think he's dumb, and he is not. He's incredibly smart. And if you listen to an interview or listen to him talk, he is very intelligent. He doesn't – now, he, he has, like, a little bit of Floyd Mayweather in him. Like, he says fuck a lot. He cusses. He says some shit, and people – but, you know, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. kind of guy. He's in good company here. But if you watch one of this stuff – now, 
as I said, you're straight A student in high school. His stepfather, though, <laughs> when he was 25, Tommy Pham was like kind of struggling in the in the minors. He's like, I don't. He doesn't know if he's going to make it. Doesn't know if he's going to go. So his stepfather is an electrician. So they were doing, he was doing apprentice work with his stepfather because he was just like, I don't know if this is going to work. I didn't go to college. I got to figure out a way to make money. Like he's a grinder. That's He's, he's a hustler. He's going to figure it out, right? So he's working with his stepfather. Apparently, I don't know, something developed. They had some words and uh, his stepfather fucking pulled out a knife and stabbed him. So like that was his first stab. <laughs> Tommy Pham gets stabbed by his stepfather. Something that gets put in there, like when he was 26. But... It might have motivated him to get back out on that baseball field and said, fuck this, working in this fucking like a schlub shit. I'm going to go back out there and give it one more chance. Now, it's like getting stabbed, gets back on the baseball field. Stabbed, I, perfect fit. Stabbed him right into the majors. Hell of motivation. <laughs> so now here's some things about Tommy Pham. He's constantly trying to prove. Like he's always was like, okay, I got to figure this out. He's had five hitting coaches that he pays. He puts on his payroll and has for his career to just tell him what he should be doing better. He's a huge analytics guy. Like he looks at numbers. And he's like, I noticed this. Tell me how I'm supposed to change this. I'm going to do, you know, whatever. He has a unsatiable desire to fucking win baseball games. This guy is fucking out of control. And he understands the business of baseball, I think, more than a lot of people. So, like, he is just, he's tuned in on this shit. And that's what I could see from him. Now, (laughs) he got stabbed at a strip club in San Diego. That's another thing people talk about. (laughs) That happens. If you watch the videos on TMZ, his back is cut the fuck open. Like, if he had a tramp stamp, it was like a big, long slash, okay? So now, (laughs) everyone's like, bad seed. Dude, guy goes to a strip club. He's not drunk. He fucking ends up suing the strip club because he said they did not provide the security, did not get, you know, the people away from him when they should have gotten away from him, and that's why he he got stabbed. So now everyone's like, oh, of course he's going to say that. He's fucking innocent. No, motherfucker sued the strip club and won. They settled with him. They didn't want to go to court because they had fucked up so badly. Wrong place, wrong time for this guy. Like, he's just out having a good time. He's just, just like his buddies, too. They're all wearing, like, red sweatpants, which is, well, I mean, good good decision when you get stabbed and you're bleeding out from the back. But, like, <laughs> him and all his boys are dressed exactly the same. And he had asked these gentlemen to please move away from his car. I don't know if he said it that way because, you know, he says fuck a lot. But they took a little bit of offense to that, and a fight broke out, and he got stabbed. So, 200 <laughs> stitches, did that shit. Anyway... Strip club get pays off and they get shut down anyway because they weren't practicing like good COVID violations or COVID procedures and stuff and all that. That's probably why people were there. Uh, so they were, you know, having to wear their masks. It was kind of funny to see all these people like getting fights and wearing masks. Um, it was just that. I know we're not that far removed from COVID, but it was just still like, oh, wow, yeah, that happened. Um, so then the next thing you hear about a lot and you alluded to it in the beginning is the, the slap of Jack Peterson. Well, Tommy Pham. Very it, slappable long, face. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah, no, very yeah, slappable yes. face. Yeah, oh my god! No and question. if you listen to the interview of Jock talking about it, I wanted to smack him too. I'm like, I'm glad <laughs> White Black Day fucking fucked this shit up because I, I don't want this motherfucker on our team. So Tommy Pham, Jock Peterson, and a bunch of other people, Mike Trout, all these people are in this fantasy football league. Fantasy. So like, they're 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 doing something. Tommy Pham calls out Jack Peterson and says, hey, listen, you're hiding people on your on your injured reserve list and you can't do that. Uh, That's bullshit. That's cheating. Jack Peterson, being the smart ass that he is, goes in and screenshots the rule that says you can do it and, and sends it to him and says, no, it's 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 totally legal. You can do that. And then he says, and you must be in another league because you're doing what I'm doing right now in this league. And Jack. And so Tommy Pham's like, motherfucker. Okay, so you would think, all right, and people are like, well, that's why they got in a fight. Not exactly. Tommy gets put on to San Diego. Jack Peterson's on the Dodgers or the or on the Braves, wherever he is. Talks shit about the Dodger or talks shit about the uh, um, the the Padres to him. So he gets all pissed off, and he says to him, he goes, "Listen, motherfucker, next time I see you, I'm gonna fucking pimp slap you. I'm gonna pimp slap the shit out of you." Exactly what he said. So Jack's playing for the Braves. And Tommy's in Cincinnati, and Jock says he's out in the outfield. Tommy Pham comes up to him and goes, hey. He's like, I'm Tommy Pham. And Jack Peterson's like, oh, hi. And he just fucking nails him. (laughs) And, like, people 
running in and like trying to stop the fight. And they're like, it wasn't like a bench is clearing shit, but like it was kind of like that because it stopped real quick. But Tommy's like, I told him I was going to do it. I went and fucking did it because the guy's a bitch. He's like, I, don't I love this. So, it's a man of his word. In conclusion, Tommy Pham, I am fucking so happy he's on this team. I think he has he, – he you go through and you listen to him talk. People say he's a clubhouse cancer. You can't find a person that says, yeah, he was really bad in the clubhouse. Quite possibly because he might smack them. But you know when he said anything, said that, Allegedly. that has come out. Okay? So, like, he's just, like, I don't think he's the guy that people think he is. Or maybe he is. I don't know. But, like, he – seems to be really good and seems to set a good example of how hard you have to work to stay in this league and is not taking anything for granted. He always credits himself with his hard work and how he did there to get where he's at. He does not say, oh, this was God or so-and-so did this. He's like, fuck no. He's like, I busted my ass 24-7 to get to where I'm at, and I'm going to continue to do that until I'm out of this game. So my sock summer, number two guy on this team when he comes up, Tommy Pham. 100%. Wow, love it. Yes. Tommy Pham's number two. I'm so, good with this guy. I'll take him. I'll be, I'll so I'm going to sit on my seat with this motherfucker in front of us. I'll, I'll just me, say that right now. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Because a big thing yes, has sir. been a big thing has been made about, like, uh, the turning over the clubhouse. Man, there's too many, like, there's too many, like, problem guys in the clubhouse. Yeah. And they're getting in real professionals and blah, 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 blah. Do you think that a clubhouse is more improved by consummate professionals like a Paul DeYoung or, you know, Martin Maldonado or a Tommy Pham who will kind of be like the David Cohn-esque enforcer and be like, oh, this guy is not following the program. I'm going to take him in the closet and beat the ever-living shit out of him. Yeah. Like, which, well, <laughs> or do you think you need a mix of both? I think you need I think you need a mix of both. Here's the deal. Tommy Pham's not a fake, like, tough guy, okay? And I, wanna, and I don't want to home in this in this room but like he's not tim anderson okay like i'm gonna talk to shit and then i'm not gonna have like the actions to back it up necessarily right we all we've all heard about you know tim anderson getting smacked too and then also getting knocked down on his ass when he was the squares up with the guy in uh in, with against cleveland i think tommy fam talks the talk and walks the walk i don't think it's it's not it's like hey you need to work harder on this and he's the guy that's going to be in there early working harder on that. You know, like he's going to lead by an example. Uh, I mean, he, he like he was just with um, oh shit, the guy from uh, Arizona um, that we hired, the front office guy. Uh, Josh, Josh Barfield. Barfield. Josh Barfield. Josh, this has to be a Josh Barfield saying, listen, bring him in. He's really not this guy. You know, he helped out here. And I saw some, you know, clips of him with some of the younger talent on Arizona and just giving the guy shit. Fresh He's talent? like, yeah. Huh? Fresh talent? Yeah, yeah, fresh down. <laughs> uh, but no, he's telling telling some of the young kids like this, like you know, he's like, oh, this guy, you know, you got to watch out for this guy because he does this and he does that, you know. And he's like, kind of pumping him up, you know. And, and that's kind of what you need in a teammate. I want to, I want to like say like he's like an AJ Przinsky, and not a guy that's not afraid to call somebody out and say, "I'm not punch doing a what trainer you're in the ball." <laughs> Absolutely. You got to do what you're supposed to do. And, and I think that he is, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I thought it was a very refreshing look at who that he is as a person, reading all this stuff and, and looking at who he is. Uh, and it was just, I don't know. It's better. I think people need to do a little bit more investigating. Read that SI article. It's really good. Um, but he also is just, he's, he's not a no, he's a no bullshit kind of guy. And I just, I, I think that's refreshing. And, you know, especially when we're getting fed lines of shit almost every other day. To have somebody go, you know what? I fucking sucked out there. I did like I did something shitty, you know, when he was in the World Series and he got picked off second. He's like, that's not me. I fucked up. Like he didn't say, oh man, I was paying attention to so and so and I should have been, but he didn't. He's like, nah, I got caught sleeping. I fucked up. It's my fault. I'm sorry. You know, like taking the, like taking that on is is a big thing. Like I, I, I just like that. No, no. Everything about him I read today was good. Uh, it could be totally wrong. It could end up blowing up in their face, but I think it would be, I think it's going to be a good move going forward. Beef, before we move it's on to the next, before we move on to the next thing, I, I never got who you wanted Tommy Pham to slap. So why don't you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I thought about this a lot. It, it pained me to do it. And, and truth be told, I had a different guy in mind. But then I looked up Tommy Pham was 6'1", 223 pounds. I don't want to sl him to slap a guy onto the aisle. So I, I couldn't pick the smaller guy that I was actually intending on initially. So it, it ends up paining me. I I want him though. Full-fledged effort on this shit. I, I I need not just one slap. I need like the 
Coach Normandale trying to get Shooter out from being the drunk. Pour water on his head or whatever. We need to turn this man around. It's his last chance to be in the major leagues, and that's my big boy, Mike Soroka. He can take a oh. slap from Tommy Pham, but he'll know, hey, it's time to get my shit together. He's a man who needs to get his ass in gear. We saw a couple young uh, hurlers come up and look good. And Mike is sliding down the uh, pecking order here, so I'm a little worried for him. So, Tommy, get, yeah. in that, get in that clubhouse. I want you to smack the shit out of Mike Soroka and keep doing it until he gets his shit together. 16 Speed. home runs last year, 68 RBIs. I mean, guys, we could use, it. We could we could use, use that it. fucking production. Yeah. I'm sorry. Speaking of hurlers, and also going to the opposite end of the H spectrum, <laughs> <laughs> we just saw Nick Nostrini's debut uh, this week. I want to get your initial thoughts for both of you on Nestrini's debut, how you felt about him going out there. MSS, you've talked for a long time. I'll, I'll let, you, let you get a couple drinks let me, in. Let me think about this. Beef, what, what were your initial thoughts on the Nestrini debut? I mean, he looked under control. Uh, the fastball had ride. He pitched. Uh, he, he was mixing up his pitches. He used the change up 24% of the time and the slider 20% of the time. So it wasn't like just, you know, forcing fastball and, and, and not. It was a five-inning start. An impressive five inning start. They did hit the ball hard on him uh, on occasion. So the, to me, this wasn't yeah. like oh the second coming of Doc Gooden, but it looks like a guy who may have some staying power. And they're already penciling him in for a start in Philadelphia. So it's not like he's yeah. out of the rotation immediately. This was just a one shot deal. He's one of the guys who who had promise coming over here in the trade. He came into Lance Lynn and um, and uh, what's the other guys? The, the uh, Joe Kelly. Joe, Joe Kelly. Kelly. My my guy. Joe Kelly trade. And immediately hit the ground running with the Sox in the minors. But then spring training absolutely killed it. And I'm wondering, he was the type of guy who has so much reliever risk. Like, it, the stuff's good, but it's like, I don't know if he if he could throw strikes. I'm wondering if the marriage with Bannister is helping him enough to get him across well, that, that path there. That was that was my first impression of it, Beef, is that the he seemed to have the control that he needs. To, and which is, you would think that a guy who struggled with control... And then he's coming up for his first major league start. His whole family's there that like, yeah. I was willing to see him give up a bunch of walks and be like, you know what? It's, it's the yeah. jitters of, of, you of got this, excited. This and all this yeah. Shit. You're just yeah. like over, overly excited. You know, you have to, maybe you haven't you let it out in a couple of days. So an entire week, some people, he's not in the low plan, plan and blowing he one wasn't on day. Plan. But he went out there, relax. Yourselves. I mean, he gave up, he gave up. <laughs> I think he gave up a home run, right? He gave up a home run. But, like, he did. Yeah, he did. seeing a guy throwing a mid-90s four-seamer and not giving up a million home runs was a bit <laughs> a bit of a relief. You the know, fastball's I, got I hope, ride, Terese. It's got I ride, they that, tell me. And it, it was and it was lower in the zone. It wasn't like <laughs> that meat, uh, you know, high high middle pitch that we kept seeing last year. So, it like, the, the initial return is definitely promising, right? And, like, especially you look at this team and you're like, I could give a shit if Chris Flexen ever pitches again, right? Like, so, you're like, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, <laughs> damn. There's all Cold kinds of opportunities. He's the only one right here with Chris Cold Flexen. Cold <laughs> There's opportunities oh, for things. Now, Beef, I I'll tell you, Rest I'm still peace, all Brett. for the six to seven man rotation. So we could. I, I think mean, they're going six man at a minimum. We need to get that seven man awesome. going. Is, is my it, the, se the seven becomes easy. Like Tanner Banks opening every once in a while too. <laughs> like t yeah. Tanner Banks opening for Chris Flexen or Eric Fetty. <laughs> like that. That makes this like really like a seven man already. Then you could maybe get to that eighth. You know, like it's, yeah. there's there's a lot of options here. Just maybe everybody's a starter. Potential. That's right. <laughs> And, and but I I did overall uh, I like what I saw MSS any thoughts on on the first start? I mean, I I I I, I, I like they didn't go out there and just get like his fucking head blown off his shoulders. We've seen that plenty of times. It's mostly with Carson Fulmer. Um, so it was <laughs> it was nice to not have that happen. Hang on, um, <laughs> he's still around, man. <laughs> You, you, well, it's you funny. To... He had a nice little start to the year, and I, I messaged you so the tweet, and he blew the lead that night. That night, he Way fucking blew the lead. Way to go! You got you 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 got eyes on him. He's like, I thought I had escaped the one away curse, and no, I have oh, not. Like, you're back. I, I fucking got alerted, and it gets fucking gone. Um, but yeah, it, I, I I I like that part of it. Seems like a good kid, smart, like oh, good and a beautiful kid. Uh, so yeah, yeah, okay, so I got a little problem good. there. A little too yeah. handsome. I should have brought that gritty. up in my analysis. He's We're a little too to handsome. That. I need him to be a little more gritty. You get to We're going to okay. get to that later. Okay. We're going to get right. to All that right. later. Okay. All right. It's beautiful. Uh, as far as the game, though, I mean, it was, it was, it was not, I want to say ho-hum, 
but it also it was just it was just good to see a guy start off and just not like literally not get destroyed like Carson Fulmer did. So now, yeah, it was good. Now speaking of getting destroyed, so <laughs> beef you you had uh, NWI Steve on the Azure the the other day. I did. Go, yes. go, everyone go watch it. It's really good. Please do. And Thank you. and he he said, hey, what if what if uh, Nick Destrini becomes Gavin Floyd? How would you feel about that? And you were excited about it. I was like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Like a mid rotation arm, you know, like like three or four, you know, arm, but man, I hope it's not as volatile. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> right. Cause you, you remember, you, remember, you the game, remember the games you would go to, like we would be oh, sitting man. out there and it's like, Gavin doesn't have the curveball today. <laughs> And it's like, holy shit. Like, he, he hangs, like, the first curveball of the game, and it goes 600 feet, and you're like, let's just drink ourselves into oblivion. We don't need to remember this. Yeah, so I'm a little bit nervous about that. MSS, Gavin, if he were to become Gavin Floyd, let's say his his changeup is the the curveball in, in the situation here. Um, or maybe a slider. His slider is the is the curveball in the situation here. He doesn't have the slider today. Holy fuck! But the rest of the time, he might carry a no hitter into the seventh inning, right? right? Like so, yeah. So, wh- how do you feel about that guy? I mean, decent, right? Like, I, Gavin Floyd was like, like, he was mid before we even knew what mid meant, you know. But he he like was good enough though, and we've seen enough bad to kind of know. Okay, this is okay. I'll I'll take this. He's a good fourth guy. If he's a he becomes a good fourth, fifth guy in a rotation, I mean, fucking a. That's a that's a win. That's definitely a win. Yeah, for it, for dumping your guys at the end of the year. Like it's yeah. not like they like it's not like it was like some great trade. This like is big, big time guy. They traded away. This, <laughs> this is not the failure of ep- epic proportions like a Zach Collins is that you drafted first. You know, right. this isn't yeah. what we trot out to first base every, you know, game. <laughs> you know, this isn't Thanks for the like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it wasn't. This was like a throwaway piece. And then it, it might become something. OK, not throwaway, but a throw in piece. And it might become something. And if you can get that, if you can get a, a career 18.1 or 18.1 war pitcher. Actually, it's fifteen point seven. I'm sorry, I thought it was eighteen. Uh, good. Well, maybe he pitched today and went down three games, three points. But uh, <laughs> I don't think so. It's, it's fucking. Like, that's fine. You know, that was that's okay. I'll take that. I'll take that all day and twice on Sunday. Now, beef. I don't want to. I don't want to ruffle MSS's feathers too much. But you know, we're looking at this team, and now we got. Yeah. You know, we got we got the. I know where you're going, motherfucker. We got a number of guys on this team. Dominic Fletcher's one of them. Yep. And now we got Nick Destrini here. We got and Dominic we got Leon. Dom- Dominic Leon. We got we get Nicky Lopez, I believe. He's half. Yeah. And Andrew Benatendi. Andrew Benatendi. So we're do I we don't know. do we got do we got too many Italians on this team, Beef? Is it? <laughs> by you the way, what? by the way, when when Vinny Pascatino hit a home run off uh, of Nick Destrini, <laughs> I thought Onyek was going to shut down for a year. <laughs> you guys are. We have six Italians on this team. Clemenza ran and, and got the home run ball, so that's that's what happened. I, I am a little nervous about it, and, and now mind you, Bridgeport has a lot of Italians. We grew up with a lot of Italians, but I my concern is it might it might uh, you know upstart the neighborhood a little bit. You know something might you know uh, something might fall off a truck that wasn't intended on. I don't I don't know what's going to happen over here. MSS, I'm worried about you, baby, because Good. you're secondhand sales. Someone might get there before you. I I don't know. Good. I don't know what will happen, you know? I'm just a little be, uh, worried about it, okay? It's going to be like when Rocky opened, you know? All those guys. <laughs> oh, you just saw Rocky, didn't you? <laughs> oh, oh, you just uh, you just saw Nick Justini strike three guys out, huh? Okay. Yeah. No, we have uh, Nick Justini, Dominic Leone, Dominic Fletcher, Nicky Lopez, and Andrew Benetton. We have six Italians. So you guys posed this question in the in yeah. the thing. So I was like, I'm going to tell you how many how many Italians is the right amount of Italians they have on your team. <laughs> let's, let's break let's it down. See, okay. Let's see. So originally, like, okay, now again, if you don't watch us on YouTube, you should probably do that because this is coming loaded with a lot of graphics. I'm going to explain it for the visually impaired, but uh, you might want to check us out on YouTube, subscribe and like and all that bullshit. Now, one Italian, you think of these things, okay? You think of like Mama Celeste, right? Pizza for one, microwave pizza, kind of shitty, but you know, whatever. If it, Within a pinch, if you're high as fuck, Luke might have drafted it the other night, but Mama Celeste pizza, not so bad. 
Now, the other guy on the right-hand side here is uh, Chef Boyardee, whose name is Itori Boridi. And then his, also his Americanized name is Hector Boyardee. Hector. I don't know what the fuck. I never, I never met a fucking Italian named Hector, but apparently that was what they said. Hey, this is what it sounds like. Came over okay. from the old country. Huh? So now you guys are thinking, okay, you know, one Italian, not bad. We can have just one Italian. No, sometimes one Italian is bad. Okay, uh, this is Mike Tirico, who is Italian. Now there is a picture of a table because when he was at a meeting with, or was at a dinner party with fucking other coworkers at ESPN. He sent this woman a message and said, I wish we were just here alone because I would fuck you on the tenor table in front of all these people. She did not like that and told him to fuck <laughs> off. But Shocking then, that she did not like that. <laughs> he flew. He, drew, he went home after her in a car. Or this could have been a separate incident. I'm not sure. He, he stalked somebody home after another party. And uh, she told him also to fuck off. Uh, he was definitely, you know, they Mike, slapped. They Mike Tirico, not as handsome as Nick Mystery. And I'm just throwing it out there right now. No. It's close. <laughs> it's quite. So anyway. Well, let me, let me say this. If, if that text came from Nick Mistrini, you might rethink it. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, where, where's my meme at? Nick Mistrini <laughs> saying, I want to fuck you on this table is a lot better than the fucking troll-like guy who thinks he's Italian, Mike Tirico. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so that's if it could be, it could be bad with two. Now, two Italians. You got you. You got my guys. You got Mario. There Luigi. we go. Fun times. Okay, <laughs> they're a team. They're going together. They're saving a fucking uh, princess. They battle the big uh, Donkey Kong that's trying to destroy everybody. And set you know, he sets barrels on fire and throws them at you. Uh, but yeah, so Mario and Luigi, two Italians. Yeah, that's good, you know? Two Italians. That's good stuff. <laughs> the accent. The accent coming in there, Treasy. That's what, that's Three what Italians. Saying. Okay? What is this? This is El Voto. Okay? These are <laughs> no, this is a trio <laughs> of crooners and singers over there. Now, listen. MSS listens to this right after Limp Bizkit, Treasy. This, <laughs> this is you just trying to prove to people you're Italian. No. I don't know who any of those guys are. I don't know who they are either, but I listened to him sing a bunch of Oso Lamio, and it was great. It was fucking good stuff. The kid. Yeah, look so how Italian is becoming one just from the second. He's going to he's gonna say marinara right pretty soon. It's going to be one amazing. Of, one of the kids fucking was a real fat little pudgy kid. He has grown in to be quite a good-looking individual. Nick Mastrini, like, these guys are awesome. Uh, don't check them out unless you like crowing your music. All right. Now, we get into four Italians that couldn't find four Italians, okay? I don't know what to do. <laughs> there's, just never, there's never been five, four Italians together. <laughs> five Italians, though. So. Now we're starting to go. You could have just done this image twice. You cut pussy out of there because he got killed. And then... <laughs> this is... <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers, <laughs> oh, Steve. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I mean, the show's only 87 years old. God help me if you haven't watched it. No, uh, five Italians, uh, you, you're, talking, you're talking something organized. Uh, we all got matching suits. Uh, we we hang out together maybe too much. Uh, <laughs> probability of things being bad, yeah, it gets bad. It could get bad, right? So if we're at five. In five, where it starts, to I start like if it turn. It starts. Yeah. To that turn. looks good. That yeah. that looks good. Then. It does. Not, it does. They get, they get shit done. Them guys get some shit done. Unlike now, the as side. I said, heavy hit. You know, <laughs> we have we have five Italians, so we're kind of teetering on the good. Now, we add some more. We get a little more. We get into seven Italians. We got problems. Oh, this yes. is the yes. entire shit show. The Jersey Shore, 100%. This is too many Italians. We do not need seven <laughs> Italians. I don't know if you guys Wait, watched what? the Jersey Shore, but my God, that original, that original fucking cast. Snooki gets punched by some dude at a bar. You know, they get all hammered and some dudes is punching her. A uh, Mike? The situation before he got clean and got all this stuff was ramming his head into cement walls. You know, Sammy <laughs> and Ryan had about the worst and most fucking chaotic relationship I think ever captured on video and then broadcast to everybody. This is seven Italians, bad fucking news. So if we sign two more, I don't know. We got to talk to somebody. This is too much. It's, it's going to be too much for MSS and something we don't need in the 108 because it's no. just going to be a lot of infighting MSS, and weird shit. I'm out of all those wonderful Italian that you <laughs> that you showed, even the ones that are fucking video game characters. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the real life one, yeah. uh, John Leguizamo was uh, Puerto Rican. It doesn't doesn't count. 
that's like, the little <laughs> banner was. Oh, oh that's all. That's the only but, Mario. What the fuck? But, but out of but out of all of those, yeah, yeah, out of all of those, grooming wise, you've seen Nick Nostrini now, and you've seen yeah. up close pictures yeah. of him. Who is he most like? Because I feel like it might be that last picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. You know what though? He, Nick Nostrini's eyebrows. They need maybe that's a little better. <laughs> That's a little better. His his eyebrows need a little bit of. He's got to trim up a little bit. He's got to get a little. He's got to take care of that. Like us Italians get a little. You get some. They get some. Get some pretty high uh, eyebrows. So <laughs> some high eyebrows. Oh shit! Sm- Smasher Pash Snooky, or is that Pookie? Did you say Pookie or Snooky? He said Snook. Smash or pass. That's good. Answer it. Smash. Hundred oh, percent smash. Yeah, yeah, it's hundred percent smash. I'm, I'm, Which one was it. that? She's the little Snooki, short one. She's the small one. Sounds good. We're in. She's the one in the front. She's the one with the she's the, she's the She's the shortest one in this picture of people <laughs> that I can only see the top half of. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to tell you to fuck off again. <laughs> Two times tonight. All right. I found, I found the, the, the meme with Mike Tirico and, and uh, Nick Discreeny. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh poorly shaped. I apologize. <laughs> oh, my God. You shot that on your fucking Motorola Razor. I just I get it. I just grabbed the first one I could get. I apologize. So anyway, yes, <laughs> having too many Italians can be a bad thing. But we're where we're at right now. We're not killing everybody. We haven't brought people over from the home country, <laughs> Sopranos, right now. Okay, because like you, you add Furio in there and another guy, oh, Johnny Six. Guy. Then you start getting up to seven. Bad <laughs> news everywhere. Just really bad. But. I thought the Jersey Shore was a little bit better, more chaotic. Still can be fun, right? Still fun times and no one dies. So that's nice. So don't look down. Oh, my God. What a great breakdown. <laughs> yeah. Two, two, two breakdowns tonight. I'm just – I'm Italian. That was good. You're on it tonight. Things I know. You're, uh, you're on it. I mean, as soon as, <laughs> as soon as you're ready to be on it again, you can, you yeah? can lay us down with the, some – paying some bills. Let's do it. Baseball is back, White Sox fans, and we're thrilled to have you back on the South Side and excited to help you make this season even more special. Whether you're celebrating a win or lamenting a loss, there's no better way to do it than in a Mazda from Mazda Roland Park. Driving a Mazda is a truly thrilling experience. It's just like watching Paul DeYoung hit homers at the park. And just like Paul, Mazda cars are some of the most reliable and stylish vehicles on the road. They offer an enjoyable driving experience with sleek designs and advanced technology. Mazdas are also fuel efficient, making them an impractical choice for those who want to save money on gas. So why not take your car game to the next level and test drive a Mazda today? Mazda Roland Park, home of the Zoom Zoom Nation. 8910 West 159th Street, Orland Park. 708-444-3200. Zoom Zoom. It's a jam. I'm so excited because now I get to use <laughs> use this uh, picture that I've never used ever before, which is the more white sock <laughs> sock. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Image <laughs> really white Sox heavy today, but yeah, yeah. kind of, hey. kind of. I'm mixing kinda. some fun. Not, though. Not, it's been mostly fun. some fun. We're not yeah. we're not keeping it too serious today on the White Sox because if we did, we'd need to drink way more. But the uh, the news that that came out is that the White Sox are likely or are, are close to uh, signing a deal with Stadium moving forward, not to get a new stadium, the company stadium. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The, right now, streams, and they also, the, that channel is available in some cable packages, um, usually as like an add-on. So the Sox, Bulls, and Blackhawks are nearing a deal with Stadium. So this would be both the Reinsdorf's teams and the, the Wirtz family uh, going over to Stadium, which was a question mark as the as the NBC Chicago deal came to the end. Would the Blackhawks jump to marquee? Would the Blackhawks do something on their own? Yeah. And what was Jerry going to do with both of his teams? Right. So it's sounding more and more like it's going to be stadium. We'll see. I don't think anything's finalized yet, but I think it's, it's, it's supposedly close to the finish line. Uh, if, if the commenters, please correct me if I'm wrong, but regardless, we think that's going to happen, but what does this mean overall for the team? And, and beef, I'll start with you. What do you, what do you think this might mean in terms of the white Sox? <clears throat> You know, it's a good question. I don't know because I don't really know how stadium will roll out there and how we'll actually ingest it. I wasn't sure if it's going to be a channel that has to get picked up by all of the cable, if it's going to be a standalone streaming package where you're going to have an app on your TV, on, on your smart TVs, you're bringing in. Like, yeah. I don't know what, what the options are going to be. I don't know how much you're going to try to embed it 
kind of into us. Like I was thinking, we get it's full season ticket holders, full disclosure. We get MLB uh, package, the MLB TV thing for free yeah, as part of our free. season pay, pay, ticket package. I wonder yeah. if the White Sox are baking in, like, hey, we're going to give you this for free, full season ticket holders to start on some app or some package that you can do this stuff. So my que- my initial question was, how does it end up getting ingested by people? Because my thought is, it's not just a oh a closed feed of the of the game uh, of each of the team's games. This feels like this is twenty four hours worth of content per day. And so, Teresa, yeah, do you yeah. know what kind of what what's going to happen, or is it just like up there still? So I'm probably one of the few people who's had Stadium uh, before. <laughs> so, so with uh, with Hulu, is it just like NBC right now? Sports uh, no, Chicago, it's, NBC? no. So it's interesting. So it's it's not infomercial. Hulu, I, I think it was with Hulu, or maybe it was Sling. I can't remember which one it was. But when you bought the uh, the package that brought you Red Zone, okay. right? Because there's like uh, an extra. The charge to get Red Zone and, and a couple other channels. There's like this whole sports package, and one of the channels that you got with it was Stadium. But Stadium was like six channels. Like it took up like six different channels, and oh, none shit. of them were ever oh, on. Fuck. I was gonna like, say it was like, like, on there. It, nothing like, showing. Nothing. Nothing. It would be like they, they'd be off most of the day, and then it'd be like uh, college uh, volleyball is on right. Now. <laughs> and like, I like that. It's, it's like it's a wild. Like I was like, what? What is this station? Like who? Who owns this fucking station? And then I was like, ah, Jerry owns the station. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I mean, and Brooks was part of it too, right? For a little while. Uh, yeah, I think when when he was uh, heading up by the, what was it called, Silver Chalice, which is like who owns yes. the stadium. There you go. Um, but like, yeah. So so that in MSS, you bring that up, and that's that's something that like I was talking with uh, with Josh Nelson not too long ago, and I was I was telling him I was like, I feel like everything that they and like i i know a lot of you are waiting for jerry to die um but i i think i i already think jerry's working on the exit strategy i think the new stadium is part of it i think inking this deal is part of him him getting ready to sell the team because you can't sell the team if they don't have a tv deal and i don't think there's a rsn out there that's going to pay for this (laughs) right (laughs) right and so like i don't think so so like he's basically paying for the, the, the he's, tv right he's seeding his own tv and, deal and his own station yeah. and saying oh if you buy the team you're gonna get this new stadium you get the station already ready made you can buy that too as part of this you're all set up kind of. right exactly and yeah. so and like and he can insert his people that he wants to run the the tv station yeah he can hire in all the people that he wants to do that beforehand knowing that someone's not gonna probably they're, they're, they're gonna come in and clean house in the the white Sox org but they'll probably leave that alone for at least a little while. So, like, right. I, I really feel like he's trying to, like, insulate as much as he can in in order to sell, but also to be loyal to a lot of his people. Um, I think Ooh. what's what's interesting about it is that they're going to have to go through exactly what the Cubs went through, only they have an extremely shitty team. Like so, I don't, I don't know how that's gonna work out, right? Like where you're like, oh, you gotta pay extra to go, go watch this team, and, but the team's terrible. Yeah. Like, at least yeah. with the Cubs, the Cubs were like, a decent team, and you're like, okay, they're they're definitely you know clawing for every dollar they could get out of us, but like, it, you know, the people it, Cubs fans were probably like, yeah, okay, I'll I'll pay it, or you know, if if it's available, I'll get it. Meanwhile, the Sox, like if if I think if we went to most Sox fans right now, you see it in the, the attendance at the stadium. If you told them, hey, you got to pay extra to watch this, they will just fucking watch anything else. And so yeah. like, I, that's that's the risk that I think they're taking with this that I don't think he's seeing as clearly. Um, it, that's, but, but very... that's just the, the my initial read on the whole situation. I mean, that's a good thing. Like what you're saying is true, right? But it also could turn around and be like, okay, now listen, we need to make this product better. Or, hey, listen, we need to make this somewhat entertaining. It's no longer just, you're, we're going to get our money anyway, so we can do whatever we want. Now it's going to be more on you to make it thing. And they, to me, that's exciting. Like, as a as a guy that, you know, as we're content creators and all that stuff, all of a sudden now you have the, the keys to the car. You can kind of do what you want. You can get the advertisers you want. You can do all this shit. Like, I think there's a lot of room to do stuff. Now, will they do it? I don't know. They seem it doesn't seem like like there's are they people capable there that, of doing it? Are they capable right. of running a station? They are like, capable of doing I, it. 
I had the station. There was nothing on. <laughs> right. No, I mean, <laughs> you think they might get run a little bit, right? <laughs> it was like the bars, the, 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 like the red, yellow, and blue bars at the end of the night. Like it was. What they the were, fuck is this? They were talking about this on the score today, like briefly, like when I was listening to crossover, and it's or changeover, whatever the fuck they call it in the afternoon, and like there was like Jerry's got another team. Right, he is totally like with the Bulls, where he does absolutely nothing and he sells that motherfucker out. They're number one in attendance. The Bulls are number one in attendance in NBA basketball right now. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Like he's done nothing to retain that, and he gets it right. He I mean, and I know people are like, oh, he lucked into you know Michael Jordan and all this stuff, but they did some stuff. I mean, he he gets some of this credit like for the Jordan stuff, but to be able to ride. The Jordan wave from 1999 until now? Like, I mean, come on. That's just 25 years, for Christ's sake. I don't know if that's really <laughs> happening. It probably is. There's a lot because parents have sold it to their kids. Their kids are like, oh, this is fucking awesome. And, but it's a good experience. You guys said that, too. You, know, you go to the Bulls. It's a good experience. But but there's not, like, you try to go get, like, a food or whatever. You got, like, three choices. You got fucking nachos, you got a hot dog, or you can go get a hamburger downstairs at the Goose Island thing or a sandwich down there. There's, It's not like the ballpark where there's, like, all these different options and things you can try. It's a very limited menu. It's very limited. There's nothing in that stadium that's like, oh, this is fucking amazing. I need to come back and try this, you know, like a fucking milkshake. Um, but anyway, I, I just think that this is opens up a huge opportunity for them to like do some stuff that's interesting and fun, but I, under current ownership, I don't see that happening. Now, I, I don't saying, think they'll do it. No. Are you saying, <laughs> and I'm going to ask you guys a different question here. Are you saying new and fun things with the team or are you saying, Hey, we got a whole station. We got 24 hours to fill. Yes. Maybe multiple channels of it. It's a streaming network. It's on, you know, like, yeah, I, like yeah, I said, yeah. like there's like six different ones on, on when I had it. Um, how are we filling that time, fellas? How are we how are we filling up this time? I had like I'll give you an example of an idea that I had because I, I feel like the throwback shows are big now. Like you know, like these eighties type of yeah. remember or like in early nineties, like uh, these workout shows that they'd have on like ESPN two and stuff. Like uh, was it Gilead or whatever? That Gilad, guy? yeah, Gilad, yeah. Gilad yeah, exactly. and, uh, not, want, Tony, not Tony Little, though. Tony Little, you had to buy the goddamn that, fucking Or it was an shit. infomercial. It was, but, <laughs> that's right. I want an aerobics show that Eloy hosts. I want Eloy's aerobics. In the tights no. and everything. Yeah, it only lasts a few minutes before no. everything breaks. But no, those few minutes are, are, are wonderful. No. No. Unless that's a big naysayer. He's I'm a got, big naysayer. Why? 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 Uh, more opportunity to get hurt. I need that guy doing as little as possible. He'll be gone after this year. That's true. I was okay. Well, if he comes back and he's not on the team and I'm not expecting him to hit seven home that. runs, then he can do that. Yeah, that's fine. I would say my first thing and the, like the biggest thing is something we've all talked about. I don't even think it's my idea. I think it's all our ideas. We're finally fucking going to bring to life the Shinix sports writers where we get in the back of Shinix, smoke fucking cigarettes and fucking stogies, and we talk sports. Just like they used to do on TV. Yeah, Sports on TV. A new version. We just smoke huge joints. And, and like, what's going to be great, though, is is like we're going to have to use old papers. We'll have to sit there with a paper and read the paper and then say, did you see this story about such and such? Like, it will be great. I think it would be fun. It would sell. We only need about three cameras to do that. They can be stationary. It's been done. We can do that. It'd be fun. What do you got? I I mean, obviously, we'd be down. I obviously would be There's no yeah. question about it, man. Beef, well, I mean, got, now, Beef, you you once wrote an article on a White Sox network. Like, you wrote a blog I did. about this. I, I did do that. And I, my mind is always thinking kind of what could work out there. Or what You know, like, so, hey, if if uh, the stadium folks want to come to us for a little brainstorming uh, mission and then steal our <laughs> ideas and, and try to punt off to someone else, that's fine. But, well, I'm happy to, like, hey, John, uh, fill up with ideas. Let's steal all of Clarence's really good <laughs> ideas. Exactly. But the first one that came to Pick mind. Come out of the <clears throat> band. That we absolutely need. And I can't get enough of this. And I know people my age can't get enough of this. And we're the demo. That you're you're going after, you know, where the what, what you know up to, up to the mid fifties or whatever, is a show that I would call this old bull, kind of like this old house, but it would star Randy Brown because he he probably needs a job and generally needs one at any time. <laughs> My God, and he's going to talk to old Bulls players and interview them and do some stories from back in the day. And Randy Brown, affable guy, 
Trees, you've met a Randy Brown way back in the yeah. day. He did the pro-am at Deal South. Like, good, right. good, good man. He can host the show, and he'll get some stories out of these guys that you probably haven't heard. I know Stacey King has his podcast, but Stacey's so much about Stacey. Shut up, Stacey. Let the people talk. And then this was what Randy would do. Randy would let them actually tell a story, and you get some out of it. And we, fucking endless, man. And it doesn't even have to be championship era, man. Get a Sedale three in there. Get the fucking Granville Waiters in there. Get some oh, of the baby, baby bulls, man. Get fu- get get goddamn Eddie Curry and ask him some questions about what happened in that limo. That's what I, wanna, I want. I okay, want. Get the bench mob. The bench get the Mark bench mob. Is available. Bring me the bench mob. Right that's the what street. we need. You know that that's what I'm talking about. You can get uh, like because it's gonna be Bulls, Blackhawks, and and uh, and White Sox. Fucking utilize that shit. So that, yeah. that's my first idea. What, what do you guys think about, like, so I, it, like, people like these reality shows, right? Like, where, like, it's, it's, like, someone's, like, job to do X, Y, or Z, and they follow that person around, right? Like, what, what, let's get an exterminator into the, the cell. And, uh, <laughs> and a rate, or whatever we call it now. Get them in there, and let's start catching rats. Like, like, <laughs> no. Like you know, you know how like every show opens with like the like like especially these ones where it's like they're they're fixing an old house or something. Yeah. And, like, the door comes flying yeah. off, and there's a whole thing. Like imagine, imagine opening like the thing that the that the camp campfire milkshakes are made out of, and they open and they open a thing, and <laughs> fucking God. fifty rats come flying out. What a great episode! What a great episode that would be. Twofold. I like the idea only because if you're trying to get a new stadium, that's how you do it. You broadcast all the fucking problems, the warts, the rats of the old stadium, and say, "Hey, look, we can't even, we can't compete here." You know, like so. This is this, this, that's good. HBIC says John Taffer Stadium Rescue. <laughs> oh man, you imagine. <laughs> You imagine John Taffer like one of the last like one dollar hot dog days. He was like, "How fucking hard is it to cook a dollar hot dog? You promised the people a dollar hot dog, and they gotta wait three minutes. It takes twenty seconds to make a hot dog. Shut it down." You know, it would just be great. It was, just, I would love it. God, I would love that so much. Oh, god damn it, HPIC, you got a fucking good idea. That's good. That would be fun. What else? So you just your rat is your next one. I I mean I, I don't think that was go. a good idea. Don't yeah, just shit on it. I love that idea. Eh, I think fucking it's mad. Exterminator Man. shows do do fucking Absolutely. business, baby. Yeah, I'm sure they do. It doesn't uh, even have to just be in the stadium. It could be all around Chicago. I, I oh agree with man, so many rats. rats. That's, true. That's true. It's a sport, so baby. Rats. We're the number Here, one rat city. We're the yeah. rat champion. How how dare you? This you know what? I, oh, okay, you know, whatever. You know what I heard? You know what I heard the other day? A coworker told me that they're opening up the fucking Chicago River for people to swim in. Um, I couldn't believe it. Bless I up. couldn't look. And 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 he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, that just seems kind of weird. And I was like, yeah, you know what's weird about it? What's weird is like when you go swimming in the lake, you might bump into a fish every once in a while because there's fish in the lake. If you go swimming in the river, you might run into a rat. That's a very different situation. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, wonderful. There's there's muskrats. There's other animals that can tear your face off in the in yeah. the rivers and there's lakes. Big turtles and shit. Like there yeah, is. There's... Yeah, turtle could bite your toe off. I mean, that's gnarly. <laughs> there's no question. Uh, or something else, I mean, you know. If, if you don't take care toe. of it daily, if you if you're right. leaving it out there for a week <laughs> and the turtle might see. You. I mean, they can sense it. They can sense it. They can sense it. I know the buildup. You've been building it up. The retention is happening. <laughs> All right, so so Los, Los out there naked and uh, jerking off constantly. I love it. Um, so, I mean, I'm really happy that you also brought up that Brooks Boyer is going to take over this and because he's one of our good buddies. So definitely we're getting the 108 show, live podcast, all that shit. Dude, we could fill, I mean, what, three, five, four, six, eight, nine hours a week? I mean, it could happen. Aju, Aju too. You know, like all the weird things. Like, I mean, we got all sorts of fucking shit. You know what? I, so I, let's just let's I, just get MSS, it going. I, I had so I had uh, well two things here. One, I would have I would love it only for how much hate we would get. The people would shit all oh over God. us because they're not. If you're not tuned in with like what all our aura is, you're gonna be like, what the hell is wrong with these people? And then we will get shit. We get so much hate mail. I, I would I'd be so excited about that. But secondly, <laughs> the one thing I thought about is did a whole jerk off show. <laughs> It wasn't just all. We mixed in a few jokes between the jerks. (laughs) (laughs) Who's the other girl you jacked off to? Well, let me tell you. We have a draft. 
No, but, uh, you know, but also, like, I thought about this from Jerry's perspective. This was one of my ideas. Like, this motherfucker, I know what he's going to do. He's going to do the old, old, old school radio thing and fucking sell blocks of time. And I was thinking, would we buy a block of time to be on stadium like once a week or something like that? It's like, all like Wayne's us. World, like cable access. <laughs> exactly. That's how I'm doing. Like cable access. I can totally see it. I can totally see it. We got this dead time. We'll sell this to you for X amount. Go ahead, do whatever you want on our Man. channel, and we, and maybe they just stream that so that you can, uh, you know, they don't have to censor it or nothing like that. I thought about it. Will we buy time? What do you, what do you guys think? I don't know if we. Can I, I would that. buy time and put on one of the shows that I suggested instead. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I think it would be yeah. fun. Beef. Why don't we use some of the uh, like? F- first of all, yes, we would buy time. <laughs> I should answer your question. There's we no would, we would definitely buy time. MSS would, we, would hate it, though. We would hate it. Why would I hate it? Why time. would I hate it? We would buy the cheapest time available, just like we get the cheapest lower-level seats in, in the That's stadium. That's true. That's true. Like, we would buy, like, 2 a.m., right? Like, 2 a.m. MSS, would be you, you just, you just look minutes. out for us. To make sure we always get our work. That's, it, a, that's what I'm saying. That's why you wouldn't like it. You know? We'd be on the same time as money. NetX. <laughs> if, if, NetX. Yes. if we could make money doing it, then I wouldn't be against it. But I'm not doing some vanity fucking bullshit for some Jerry Reinsdorf stream thing. No. I'm, I wouldn't do that for a vanity <laughs> thing. I, we, if it makes money, it makes sense. That's all I have to say. Beef, I, I, after this show, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. show you uh, a message where... MSS was very much wanting to spend money on a vanity thing, but like, well, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, in the in the comments, Gene a Paul lot Kelly less says, "Than what it'd be for fucking the goddamn stadium block attack." Gene I'll Paul Kelly that. says, uh, "Stadium has killer ratings at my local Shell station." <laughs> I <didn't realize laughs> that. The, the TV must be stuck on that channel. <laughs> I don't even fucking go in there. He's, maybe he's talking from the pump. So, so I got I got another idea, guys. Yeah, it's an idea that on. I've been I've been thinking about a lot, just with regards to. <clears throat> something that I think would be funny, and I told you guys before, someone getting a microphone and fucking interviewing people after a White Sox game at Cork, like on the Saturday when we were out there hanging out, mm-hmm. would be just legit. I'm thinking just do a live stream. Oh, shit. Friday night, Saturday night from Cork. We're going to need an MC, though. You need someone to do it. Even. So here's here's my plan, uh, Treasy. Let me, let, me, let me just finish and then okay. you come on top. Um, I, I, we bring in Sammy Pinyanovich home. And he's gonna the, the Stam's gonna pay him seven figures to do the live stream from court and be the gambling expert. He comes back, he does that show, and then he does the gambling shows. What do you think? I I like it, but I, I there's a there's a caveat here. Okay, he's got to walk around with the grabber setup, like the huge, like it's got it's got to be old like school, like, like the... way way too big equipment. <laughs> like it's got to be way too big equipment. It can't be like a small, like that little tiny microphone that people enter yeah, or, no, or no, a no. phone or now. No, 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 no. It's got to be like a microphone attached to a big ass thing on his on his hip, <laughs> and like he's got to have huge headphones on. Like the it's got to be a whole I bit. Love it. Like and uh, then I then I'm in. <laughs> then I'm in. I'm glad that you caveat it with the, the the gambling stuff because there's yeah. no way in hell Sammy does any one of those shows at Cork Silver. Like he's like, oh, listen, I gotta close. get I gotta get seven <laughs> streets to the win before close. I even start this, and there'll be a lot of pickle juice everywhere and and stumbling and falling down. It will be great. Uh, it's like an up all night. Remember when Dave Dave Ch- or, uh, David David Tell. David Tell's David up Tell. all night? It'll be they'll be bringing that back. That yeah. would be fun. I would like MSS, I would like to see that again. You got to do that show. But you got you go to like Lawrence's, man. Yeah, <laughs> live from Lawrence's. Live you from you Lawrence's imagine the fun way I'm just us best and a bunch of a bunch of the craziest motherfuckers on the planet. <laughs> getting some shrimp, <laughs> getting shrimp. A person a 2 that wants shrimp. shrimp from fresh fried shrimp <laughs> from two a.m. to six a.m. have got good stories. I mean, I oh my yeah, god, I'm right. I mean, I've been in there. Got to be there. I've been in there at that time. <laughs> right. And they're like, oh man, it's it's a it's a scene. You got to get in there. I, I mean, I've never felt safer than when I'm, I'm over there and I'm drunk at two o'clock in the morning eating oh, shrimp. Man. I've Dude, always that, I've, I've I've definitely crushed. I th- that's the times too where you're like, I'm just gonna sit here in the restaurant and I'm gonna crush twenty five shrimp. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you you ordered two dozen, but you got lucky. You got one extra shrimp. <laughs> well, and, you, and I'm not, I'm not. I don't think I'm. Can't believe I ordered six pounds of shrimp. <laughs> reheating shrimp is not the best idea all the time. You just fucking eat that yeah, shit fresh. Good. You're right. Eat it when I it's mean, fresh. I still it's will reheat best. it, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, you can I, do I've, it. 
I never, it, but it's still part. I never reheat it, only because I never have leftovers. Yeah, you just gotta eat it. <laughs> Timothy Myers uh, suspecting David Tell is also available. So yeah, <laughs> so, I think he just said. Don't worry, I got a few more guys that, that are available that I'd put on this channel. We'll, we'll get is... to them in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> David, David Tell I, like came back from like like Artie Lane. Like we well, went overseas, he was in Iraq, and they were coming back, and Artie had had this, they had this big, huge thing or whatever. They've been flying for 24 hours, and the first thing David Tell does when he get lands on American soil is call a fucking comedy club, and he's like, "Hey, can I get a spot tonight?" <laughs> he's been up for 24 <laughs> hours, and it was like, "I would still need to go grind out one more set. Let me just get one set in here I before it. I go pass out for a little bit." It's what like, a fucking animal! The we, Tommy Pham of comedy, my friends. The guy keeps it going the whole time. Do it up. You got you guys bring it up though. That the, like the comedians, it, like Chicago has tons of great comedians. Like There's a no lot question. of guys, a yeah. lot of guys come up in Chicago. A lot of guys are here. Pat you know, we we were doing the playbacks. You know, and those yes, were, those were fun. But take some old games, some old like important games. And have like three comedians sit and do like a MS, uh, MST 3K, like Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. And just sit and watch that game and talk over it. Just have some comedians talking over like classic games. And you could do all the sports. Yeah, you could do, that's true. you could do, you could do, uh, Bulls, <clears throat> Sox, and, and, uh, and Hawks. And, Hawks. Yeah. and like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, plus uh, so many of them will have been at these games and things like Jordan that. Jordan Flu game. Like, would yeah. be would be fantastic. Would be a fantastic show. I would yeah. watch it. Yeah, that's that's a great idea, and you could do a, a million of them. Like there's there's so many of them you could fucking do. Like that that's a terrific idea. I love that. Yeah. MSS, you got MSS any more? Any? No, I don't really have it. I, I really want us to do something. I think we'd be really good. I mean, it's just we're we're we just need time and some money. Just give me time, and money. Just like the WNBA. <laughs> I need some time and some money, and then we'll be good to go. Well, that was that was actually a, a serious question I, I was going to have is like, can they get like some other sports, some other local, yeah. local yeah. sports, like slam I mean, ball? Like, we got a guy that can call it already, or even like, I mean, it's, it's, or, like should they be like, if they do this, should they be showing like all the minor league teams from from all the could. sports? So like, uh, like I don't know that the uh, whatever minor league team is the. The Blackhawks is that Rockford? Yeah, the, I, the, the ice, ice hogs. Like, yep. are they on a a channel? You know, I'm sure like, they are in Rockford. Well, in Rockford, um. but like here, like that's that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, but when I mean, you have the these Wolves... teams, when you have these teams with like, uh, I don't know how the G League works. That might already be like a ESPN thing. But like the uh, or is it D League now? I don't. I forget know. what it's called. But like the yeah. but the um, but like the minor leagues for the Sox. The minor leagues for the Blackhawks. These are teams that are bad right now. Having the guys that like you're supposed to be kind of promoting, you would think that you would want to have those on. But uh, one one question I do have for you guys on this is: Let's say they do this, do we get some fucking spring training games, or are they gonna like have just like one game <laughs> so, on again? You're crazy. That, that's a that's a that's a good point. I was reading this article about the the RSNs, and they were talking about marquee. And Marquis their own fucking network. They can do whatever the fuck they want. They didn't broadcast spring training games either because they're trying to cut costs by not sending people out there to fucking cover it. So I don't yeah. like you know the stock. I think shit they're loss leaders. For... I, I think the I think the spring training games are loss leaders it, the way it seems. Like, I right? think there's cheaper ways to do it, and they got to figure. There it out. could be. I mean, yeah. d- d- that's another. That's a good. That's a good point too, Treasy. When you're tasked with like, okay, whatever we don't spend, we get to keep, right? Like, and we get to make more money. It, it, it certainly might tighten up budgets. It might be like, you know what? Maybe you don't need the fucking, uh, you know, Silverado fucking S10 pickup when you go or whatever, when you fucking go out to spring training. Maybe you get the fucking basic car. Okay. Maybe you have to shack up all together in the same house. <laughs> Maybe you don't get everyone gets this is the show we need. MSS takes your life. And he shows you how to cut costs in your goddamn life. You've been spending too much money. MSS comes in and he fucking he he, he slashes your budget, going all the way down. And then you all of a sudden you're a millionaire. Everyone's a millionaire now. After speaking of uh, slashing budgets and paying for things, we got a couple drinks. Um, Yeah, Sammy Davis with some long shit that I'm not gonna read. Yeah, cheers, Sammy. (laughs) Too long didn't read. Thanks, Sammy. The the uh, the Wolves are on AH AHL TV and My Fifty Chicago, whatever the fuck that is. Bro, my fifty Chicago used to be where the Illini games were when we, in the eighties. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, when we were little kids. Little Yump says uh, MSS uh, Pawn Stars, but it's him 
pushing around senior citizens at Goodwill for Beanie Babies. <laughs> I don't know how that's Pawn Stars, but I am. Yeah, no, not, I, I do want to eh. see you beat up uh, Sister Jean. I can talk. I can talk <laughs> about things, you know. So it looks like the Ice Hogs are on AHL TV and my Fifty Chicago also. So Tre- wow. Tre- my Fifty Chicago. Tre- Tre- I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't love your idea of the minor leagues only because I just don't think anyone's tuning in. Like I, I, I think it's a, and also the minor leagues sometimes like the the like the hockey and stuff. They'll have a good camera and everything. That'll be okay. Some of the minor league affiliates for the White Sox. Oh. It's like it's on someone's fucking. Uh, it's like the it's like the only on their flip behind. Phone. It's either the center field cam or the the behind the yeah, plate no, cam. No. There's no. And there's movement. like there's a booger. There's like a booger on the on the, on the camera. I, I'm not watching that. What well, this? I mean, like the, <laughs> the MLB ones yeah. are like that. I don't know if you, if you watched that game the other day with, with the against the Royals when they were in KC. And there's just like, like, just because uh, it was like too close to the fountain. It looked like yeah. Flower Tucci was right in front of the camera. <laughs> like, there's just like spray all over. You yell at me, trees. Like, uh, I'm at, I'm at, God damn yeah. it. I just knocked that one in. No notice. We were talking about Italians. <laughs> big Italian show. Big Italian show. That's it's what we Big did, Italian though. show. We should have named this the, the Italian, the Italian <laughs> episode. I do think, though, you want to bring some old stuff back, those old games. I, I, I would do it if I, if I was stadium. They got their own fan bases, and they are very available, and probably won't don't cost that much anymore. I'm bringing Mike North and Dan McNeil back, and I'm giving North a show. It could be the Mike North Morning Show again, and I'm giving McNeil a Hawks show, and I'm throwing them oh. on there because they have look. They don't have big audiences anymore, but they have loyal audiences, and at least someone will fucking watch whatever this is putting on there. Like, why don't we have them announce sixteen inch softball? <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. There's there we go, guys. Broadcasting the 16 inch softball, why are they fucking not? You just they could just tap into that feed. I mean, we were watching that show with, with Slim Mick. He was talking about, yeah, you know, so and so is out there recording. The guy's right next to me, and it's like, all you got to do is tens, just fucking link up. Tens of people, tens of people will watch this. <laughs> it's 10 people that might not have, and you know what? They might That's buy correct. whatever bullshit product gets I advertised, okay? Whatever. Like, it, it's like, it's it's like you have the time. It doesn't cost anything, and those guys would probably love it. You know, like, hey, did you catch me on stadium? You know, that would be fun. <laughs> that was that was easily ten, fifteen million dollars worth of ideas that we just gave. <laughs> You're welcome, Jerry. Free, to Jerry. I'm, I'm sure Free he watches charge. every he watches every episode. He does. So yeah, I, he I, think, I think I think that's But uh, guys, it is it is time now for thank yous and GFYs. MSS, I'm going to start with you. Thank you. Oh, you're starting with me? Okay. Yeah. Well, Treasy, my thank you goes to you for teaching me how rounds work at ball games. Now, I know that I don't normally buy, drink beers, all right? And so I'm not faulting you for that. But when we walked into the park, and actually when we were in the Sunday Soak, I was drinking with everybody else. I was drinking the seltzers. We were all drinking a good time. We walk yes, into the park. First round, your, your, your lovely brother, Beef Loaf, buys me around. And then we're like, okay. We're drinking the uh, the Rev, uh, uh, whatever the the cold time, baby, cold time, drinking cold time. Second round comes up. Slim Mix with us. Slim Mick comes up, buys everyone around, all four of us. Slim Mick, you and me. And so I'm in. I'm in. I, I'm in. Right. Like so, I'm drinking the I'm drinking the beers. It's Sunday. Drinking the beer. First time at the park this season. I go up to go take a whiz, and you guys are coming down from uh, you know buying another round. For and us and uh, our wives, yeah. Yeah, and I took a whiz. Which is the, the <laughs> maximum amount I could bring. Uh-huh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. And uh, so we're, we're going, I come up down, going up, and I'm like, okay, well, they're probably getting me around because, you know, I'm in on the rounds here. Yeah, like, and people have like, been buying you stuff I, doesn't mean everybody has shush, to buy you something. Shush, 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 <laughs> shush. So I go down, I come back down, I finish my beer, and I go, hey, you got another beer? And they're like, oh, no, we didn't buy you, we didn't buy you a beer. And you look at me and you go, you haven't bought me a fucking beer all season in this park. I'm not buying you a beer. <laughs> Which is I was right. like, oh. So this was the first. He's like, you didn't, you didn't buy but, me a beer? And I was but, like, well, that is but not you guys what happened. went up and bought a round. That is and not so what happened. And so I was happened. like, I am not included in the round. So how am I supposed to buy you now a round back? I don't no, understand. No, no, no. I don't know how this that was supposed bullshit. to happen. This is not what happened. What happened okay, was. how did it happen? You said you didn't get me one. And I said, oh, shit. I didn't know. You were in the rounds because you're sitting two rows away from me, by the way. And mm-hmm. I felt bad about it. And then really? someone was like, hey, the next round is uh, is my sock summers. And I was like, wait, he hasn't bought a beer yet. 
and he just gave me shit about, about not uh, buying beer, and that's when I went at you. That's how that so, happened. Okay. But that doesn't so that doesn't add up though because you went up and bought that round. I should have been included in that round, and then I would have bought. The Why next would round. I include you in a round I didn't know you were drinking? You because I was included in the first two. I didn't buy either of the first two. How the fuck would I know you were included? We I went cheers. and bought a beer for me and, and beef and for our wives. We cheers when Mick went out that fucking round. We sure. all cheers. Yeah, you had one beer. I don't know. I didn't know that you were like, now you're Man. in. Man. We're fucking half, we're halfway through April. And now all of a sudden mm-hmm. you're in on rounds. He's in. He got back in. I was, I, I, I genuinely like, felt bad. And then I was I like, think. wait, this motherfucker didn't even buy a round yet. Like if you wanted to be in on the rounds on a day, you get the first fucking round. <laughs> I didn't have an opportunity to get the first round because I was waiting to get was, food. And then or the second round. round. You or the third round. round. <laughs> you missed was, the first three I rounds. It was fully out of buying. He was I not allowed have, to buy no, anything. He was, his money was chance. not taken there, okay? I did not have a chance to purchase a round yet. And I, you know I would have purchased a round. I'm really? Not that guy. Because, yes. because, like, you, you had yes. two opportunities in front of that. Did, I'm going to ask you, you a You're question. telling me Slim Mick beat you up the stairs to, <laughs> to get did. the round? Because I think Slim Mick you were already upstairs when my round was happening, and you didn't get a round. I was going up the stairs when you bought the round, and then you came back down. Now, let me ask you a question, Cherise. We're going to continue this for just a little bit longer. When I was drinking beer, was it ever a problem with me buying rounds? I don't know. That was so fucking long ago. I can't. It was like two years ago. I know. I know you're. I know you're older, so that's okay. No, I just was, was like, it two years ago. Yeah, I feel like it was. I feel like it was pre-pandemic. No, it's been two years. But no, it, it's fine. And I understood why you didn't get it. I didn't understand with the, well, you haven't bought me a fucking round. It was like, well, yeah, because I'm the next round. Like, I haven't had a chance to buy a round yet. And then I will your, buy your you a Your first time drinking with us all year, you're the last and round. Who did buy you a round? <laughs> who did buy you a round then after that? This guy. Because oh, your congratulations. Brother kind of you congratulations. First round of the fucking year. You son of a bitch. <laughs> You still have not even bought me a round, and I bought you a round. So thank Christ, I've already. Crazy, don't buy him one all year. year. I'm never buying you a drink again. Don't buy him one all year. You haven't bought me one yet. How can you not again? You haven't bought me one yet. I've never bought you a drink. Not, not this year. Which is a big deal because that's why I didn't get a drink when you bought a round. So hey, not this year. Fine, I'm gonna tell the guy come. I'm going to up the ante here. I'm going to tell okay. the motherfucker when we're going through the line, this guy's got drinks in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's wow. Barking. That'll buy you a round upstairs. <laughs> wow. Like everyone else drinks in our section. Nar. You're a fucking <laughs> nar. You. Welcome he's gonna to nark you out. Population Cherizy E. What a fucking nar. You, you know, Wally's going to tighten up his own prison wall. <laughs> oh, that thing's going to be he's way up. T- it's going to be all the way, way up there. Up. Oh my I'm gonna pull God. it out of its mouth. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So anyway, thank you for teaching me how rounds work. You just don't buy them, and I get it. I get it. It's fun. This fucking guy. Yeah, you haven't bought one. You, you bought I me bought one you round. Like you bought I'm me a, one <laughs> round in six I'm weeks. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, that thank you. I don't think you really learned MSS. Uh, <laughs> here's a, we got a drink from Joey P. Joey P says uh, salute. Thanks, Cheers, Joey. Joey. P. Appreciate you, baby. By the way, MSS, you just opened up a can of worms you never wanted to open up. No. Oh. <laughs> Who are you thinking of GFY? I was already wrong anyway. Oh, oh man. My, my, my thank you is for my guy, White Sox Sal, for some excellent advice. I, I, some of you probably have seen it out there. I put the bat signal out like I do once a year to get feedback on all of our stuff that we do. And many of you have sent in some stuff, and we appreciate that. So feel free to, you know, I'll, I'll retweet that tweet again. You can go out there and, and hit the uh, anonymous thing and, and throw in some... Uh, some feedback. Anyway, Sal gave me terrific advice. He's a longtime 108 guy. Wasn't surprising how good the advice was. I'm just really appreciative that one of the old school guys who always listens to the show uh, gave some great advice uh, on, uh, on on things that he thinks uh, might benefit us. So uh, thank you, Sal, and also uh, fuck you, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> you got to you got to thank NGFY Sal. And NGFY you Sal, you, 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 can't, you can't do yeah, it. You can't just fully thank Sal. I know, agree. Like, <laughs> Treasy. Yeah, I, I wanna I wanna thank our guy uh, Soxwood. He introduced me to a White Sox legend that I somehow knew nothing about. I had never heard of this guy. He <laughs> apparently a very famous White Sox player. 
Uh, and if you're not familiar, you know, I, I don't know if I can explain it very well, but I'll, I'll let our outro uh, ex explain it for us. So have a good night, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. In the city of Chicago, back in the day, there was a ball player. They called him Jizz. They said playing for the White Sox, he had a certain fair. He hit 69 home runs. Man, that ain't fair. He swung that back like a wild tornado storm Every time he stepped up, he smashed it It was the norm The ladies in the stands, they couldn't help but stare The legend of Alejandro Jizz Spreading everywhere Ooh, Alejandro Jizz Got the magic touch on the field, he was a kid